you told me that your favorite celebrity, like the guy that you couldn't be in the same room with, is a guy named Rick Steves. Yes. What is he? Explain to that. That's actually the name of your guy on your. Uh, you're, you're, you're like you have like a like email. Email. Yeah. Was at Rick Steves. No, it's not. What is it? It's I don't want to see, I don't want to give it out, but it's close to that. Yeah. He's actually in your email address. My my secondary one, the one that I used to like. Uh, and why? What, so like so he's very important to you. Uh, you ever met him? Once. I couldn't speak. And you were that nervous? Yes. That you couldn't speak? Yes. Explain who he is to people. He's a travel guy, and he writes these travel guides around Europe. Right. Rick Steves, Europe. Okay. And I could not. And I have been in show business since I was 15 years old. And there are very few people. The very first time that I met Bruce show in business. 1980. Four. There's people would argue that you're not in show business yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, there are people right. who argue that I'm not. I'm not in it now. You've been in show business since you're 15. 1984. I met Bruce at Springsteen. Alpine Valley. Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he let our show broadcast backstage right. the, for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. A show was able to do live from two to seven. Right. And I met Bruce and I could not speak. Right. Okay. And so. Bruce said. So you're on the radio? Uh-huh. You don't talk much. Right. So it was Springsteen and, and Rick Steves. Everyone else in I can chit-chat. In the same room? No, but everyone else I can chit-chat with. But, I don't I don't, but, I don't care. But people Clinton, don't, but people Obama. Don't, but people, any girls? That you're that, in, in, um, you know, I met Juliette Binoche at the height of her who's hotness. That? Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll show you a picture of her. Who's She's an Juliette actress. Juliette Binoche? At the, in 1997, I met her. But let me let me say because Rick Steve. So what does he do exactly? Like, how would people know who he is? He does a travel show Where? on PBS and PBS. all the PBS stations around the country. When did you first see him? Uh, I started watching his show. He started at PBS started running his show for free, maybe like the late 80s. Uh huh. And he just has this this way to to meet people that i don't have like you were you were joking yesterday about me going into a bar a cubs bar and and talking to people you're right i don't have that gene to just walk up and say hello to people i don't know he does so because of that you you can't be in the same room with him no i just i he was a a, a guy that i watched grow i i admired right but but uh, but but Dan, you take it to another level. You admire him, but he's in your email address. And no, my you, fake Beside one. the two, yeah, my but still, he's, he's in. In other words, when I put the this uh, is Julia Pinoche. Oh, really? I know she. Yeah, that's your favorite actress. I think no. I think she's in nineteen eighty in nineteen uh, ninety eight or ninety nine when I met her. She was hot, smoking hot. Okay, so, but I'm saying when I put on the Apple TV here that you set up, right? Steve's is in it, right? Okay, so I mean that's something that's special to you. That's you a put the fake. Grandmother no, no, no. In? That's my fake email. My real Still, fake email. Is something else. Something in your life you put Steve's in, fake yes, or not? Yeah. Okay, there's two people who you can't be in the same room with because you're that into them: Bruce Springsteen and this travel guy Rick Steves. <laughs> yes, absolutely true. Do you think that's? Do you think it's odd? Everybody has their. Uh, you know. Do other people know this? Uh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. Do they think it's? Do they question you on it? Do they think it's weird? Uh, my wife thought it was weird. She she walked up to Rick Steves and started talking to him and said, "My husband's really, uh, like, you know, insanely in awe. Like, I mean, so in awe, really. I mean, to right. the point where he's that much on your mind. You don't have somebody that you've watched since a kid. Uh, I, 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 I Bruce Springsteen. I get that way with sure. Right. I, you know, he's iconic. Uh, you know, because people I've been fans of since I was a little kid, it was odd. You get like, uh, of course, Howard Stern was in that league when, when I met him because he was iconic. He was, you know, uh, if I had ever let, met Thurman Munson um, uh, in a weird way. Yeah. All those Yankees because, uh, you know, Mickey Rivers and all that stuff, uh, you know, not huge guys. But to me, sure. But to, to to the point where I'm that nervous out of you know you know over forty years old over fifty years old and like if you walk, if Steve walked in right now how would you would you be able to function? Boy, you know I haven't uh, probably I'd still be very nervous. I, I'd have to say that I could be, I'd I'd have to be honest with you. I'd be and, very and he hosts a show on PBS. It's all he does, right? For Rick travel, Steve's travel, yeah. And he's turned it into and this. he's good at 
in, in, like interviewing right, people. Right. And because of that, and, and the fact that you don't have that it gene, would, right. you're that in awe. Yes, absolutely. Man, when you first when I first met you, I was able to talk to you, right? And I was a huge fan of yours. I was a, I, I, I was no, I know, but I, I don't I'm but flattered by that. But of course, I yeah, but I, I don't. Uh, I, yeah, there's not many. I, I'm just I'm trying to wrap it around my head. I'm so fascinated by that aspect of you. I just really is fascinating. Bill Murray took me once to Van Morrison, and Van came backstage, and I was just sitting there rapping with him, talking to him for fifteen or twenty minutes. And Bill was in. Bill was like, you know, usually people are in awe of Van Morrison. I I love Van Morrison. I listen to his music all the no, time. No, but no, no, that's but, a that's a false statement. People are not usually in awe of Van Morrison. I mean, really? Some, yeah, I'm not that nobody I went to high school with. Well, uh, I mean, okay. I, I respect his Who talent. Would be, I respect his talent. Bono? I mean, I'd be. It's a rock star. I'm a fan of his stuff. In all of and where I put him in my voice. Bono my, was my on a fake. Uh, Bono you know. was on a bike outside Wrigley Field. No one else recognized him. Yeah. He was by the Cubs. Uh, where the Cubs parked their car, right. and I walked over and said, "Hello, would you like to meet the team?" Yeah. And he said, "Yeah, sure." And and I rode my bike to Wrigley Field, so I realized who it was, and I said, "Do you want to go riding tomorrow?" And he's like, "Absolutely." That was all. I could never say that to Rick. But Steve. still, okay, really. So yes. bon, the Rick Steves is way bigger than Bono. To uh, you. To you. Yes. I get more enjoyment out of watching Rick Steves travel. Okay, than that's I one do. thing. But being an awe of the guy, I what? What do you want me to say? I uh, know I'm nothing. I'm just saying it's really a fast. I mean, the, the you, human. Uh, I met the Queen once. I was, I, I, you know, I lived in England for a year. I didn't give a fuck. Right. I wouldn't care about the Queen. Say the truth. I mean, yeah, we're talking about personal. Okay, since you told me that, I went and I look. I, I looked up Rick Steves. I had to see who it was. I, I, I did. <laughs> And, you know, okay, is Rick Steves heterosexual? Yes. He's married. Uh, he's been married for a while. I think he's divorced now and, and now. He's and, very and, effeminate. Uh, you know, I didn't notice that until other people pointed that out. Every single person I point him out there says he's, <laughs> thinks he's a gay guy. No, I'm saying, I mean, he's very effeminate. He's not. He's not. You want to play some audio of him? Uh, Could you be in the same room? Of oh, by the way, Dan. Chris Bryant looks like he, like I mean, you know, a guy who's on the cover of Grinder, you know, the Grinder.com. He looks like that kind of gay. Back with more of the best of Europe. This time we're in Switzerland, That's Rick enjoying Steve. not its majestic Alps, but its fascinating cities. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Man, okay, stop it right there. Is any when this podcast airs? Please, I want your comments on this. I want to you know, know if you. I, I want to know if you. I don't feel, think we recorded this Dan, one. Dan, flipping accidentally. Dan, didn't the record button. Dan. <laughs> First of all, he picks the, the sentence with the most S's in the history of sentences. <laughs> Today we're in Switzerland, in cities. Play that again. Play it again. Okay, wait. Before you play it again, I'm gonna try to set this up again every five seconds because I'm this fascinated about it. Okay, Dan. Uh, this is a fact about Dan Filato you might not have known. And I'm glad we got into this because I love the guy to death. I do. Okay, Dan, there's two people, celebrities, in Dan's world that he has been in the same room with and was speechless. So in awe of them because he admired them that much that he barely could speak. Am I accurate? Yes. Barely could speak. Like, really obsessed with this guy. But if he had to pick one, it sounds like it would be Steve's. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Two, the two people are Bruce Springsteen. Who we met in, in right. eighty four when you know when you're about like you say twenty three, eighty four uh, nineteen eighty four uh, and uh, Alpine that big venue on the Born in the USA tour yes and you meet Bruce backstage yes and his voice is it was uh, okay. very very manly yeah okay the other guy <laughs> the other guy is the guy you're about to hear now the other guy that Dan is so obsessed with loves the guy because he's seen him on the PPS <laughs> Travel Channel. Through Europe. Rick Steves, Europe through the back door. <laughs> okay. That, he's obsessed with him. He's told women in his life, wives, he can't, like, he, he just doesn't, he's really, he gets the sh shakes when he's around him, when he no, thinks about that's it. not how it goes. He's speechless, Dan. Okay, whatever. Okay, fine. You're an awe of a guy. 
Okay, is that fair? You're an awe of the guy. Yes, yeah. No, but it doesn't go like that. It just goes, you know, that, I it... watch the show, and yeah. uh, my wife and girls that I dated before her You're had, saying saw that very strong. You're going, my wife, I had a wife. So, so my, you know, they saw me with ease with Joe Tom Petty, Joe Walsh, right. uh, Bill Clinton. Like I walk the, up to Bill Clinton. I go, hey, like do no you... No big re- deal, right. No big deal. Right. But... It was a big deal when he was in the same room as the guy you're about to hear. Now, Rick Steves, tri- and the only way you need a celebrity is that he's a travel guy on PBS, <laughs> so Dan got to know him. Him and Bruce, Dan's obsessed with. Here's Rick Steves. It's traditional culture high in the mountains or savoring the joys of modern life in its great cities. The Swiss get it right. In this episode, we focus on an often overlooked part of Switzerland. It's Urban Charm. My top. We'll get some easy exercise, floating with locals, and ring one very big bell. Oh my God. We'll enjoy a variety of art, from big stained bell. glass by Marc Chagall to bold works by artists considered insane. <laughs> we'll see how the Swiss use lights as part of a creative drug policy <laughs> and explore a secret underground fortress built as a defense oh against the Nazis. <laughs> And we'll experience that incomparable Swiss natural beauty with a cruise on a romantic paddle wheeler. <laughs> Nestled in the center of Europe paddle is wheel. Switzerland. While much of the country is dominated by the Alps, most of its population is in the northwest, Holy a shit. gentler land of lakes and cities. From Zurich, we travel to Lucerne, <laughs> Bern, and Lausanne. Lucerne. Like many visits to Switzerland, ours starts in its biggest what city, Zurich. While it's a major transportation hub and many just passed through, it's a powerhouse city. Well worth a look. The Swiss joke that Zurich is zu reich and zu ruhig. That's a play on German words for too rich and too quiet. What? Sure, it's rich and there are livelier places, but Zurich is comfortable and it consistently ranks as one of the world's... Okay, not... (laughs) Lucerne. Lucerne, which is a play on German words, meaning fun with a romantic body paddle. So, okay, first of all, if you see this guy, he looks like uh, Kelsey Grammer in round glasses. Okay, you're, you're, uh, Kelsey Grammer. You're assuming was, our audience is stupid and haven't seen the number one draw on PBS. What is it? No, 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 Rick Dan, Steves. Dan, I guarantee no one in our audience yeah. knows Rick Steves. Rick they from L.A. Right. does not know Rick Steves. <laughs> Gerald uh, from Detroit. Nada. <laughs> no, no. Rod from Bayside. No way. <laughs> Dan, look, you know me. I like PBS documentaries. I didn't know who he was till I met him. I did not know who he was. Dan, let me tell you something. Our, 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 our fans of the show probably have drug problems. One of the drugs is not AZT. <laughs> our fans smoke weed, maybe uh, opiates. Do some blow, MDHA, they do not need AZT on a regular basis. He looks like the guy, I'm trying to, the guy looks like uh, uh, Malcolm McDowell in uh, Clockwork Orange if he had his hair part of the side, round glasses, and had full-blown AIDS and was paler. That's what he looks like, okay? He speaks like that. So Dan has the same feeling as that guy, as the guy who... As he's listening to Born to Run. <laughs> that and impor- that in- Born to Run. It gave you the same feeling. Dad, please tell me you realize how odd this is. It, it makes you a co- dude, it makes you a cooler person. You know the guy on the beer commercial, most fascinating man in the world? This dude blows that away. This guy's got <laughs> nothing like that. Nothing. <laughs> He once, he once went to see Rick Steves give a tour in Europe. The same day, he was in awe by Bruce Springsteen's voice. Then he went to Lucerne to use a romantic body paddle with Rick Steves. He is the most fascinating man in the world. Dan, that guy we just heard is in your fake email... He is an obsession to the point where you say uh, you were in his presence and you could barely speak. <laughs> and you still to this day have that obsession. That, Dan, is... I wanted to meet more interesting people. <laughs> I wanted to meet... 
Okay, here's, I met enough guys who, because they love Springsteen, also loved Bob Seger. <laughs> I, I, I met enough of those guys. I wanted to meet the guys who love Bruce Springsteen <laughs> and Rick Steves. It's Old Town is Lively Day and Night, with cafes, galleries, and a colorful cobbled ambiance. Zurich's main drag, Bonhofstrasse, is famous for its elegant shops. If you're looking for a fancy watch, stunning jewelry, or a $1,000 sweater, this is the place. For more affordable extravagance, these delightful mini macaroons, a local favorite, may be expensive, but they won't break the bank. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye. The city's art treasure is in its Fraumunster or Church you? of Our Lady. Dan, I, 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 you know, the only other human being in the room is Selma. <laughs> And there are people in at the Knights of Columbus who question that. He doesn't he doesn't do South America or Mexico. There are certainly things that we can say about Selma in South America. <laughs> uh, there are wonderful things, Sweden, Switzerland, Lucerne. When we get to Lucerne, we'll go across the bay and discover the wonders of the body paddle as used by the Amsterdam Indians who first <laughs> discovered it. With Marco Polo. Here on tour, sent by, of course, the Dutch. Queen Elizabeth IV said to these people, go to Lucerne. You know, this is the... Build a hut. <laughs> this is the traveling time now for yeah. many people because the kids are in school. Traveling so times. It's, it, there's a very... You the know, kid, yeah. The kids are in school. It's very inexpensive, so his new series of books came out, and I was reading one last week. In the back door. My new book is Switzerland Through the Back Door. There's some amazing new uh, uh, exhibits at the Tate Modern. In Join London. me. Join me <laughs> as I widen the back door. Join me as, because of time going by and more visits Can't from Rick see, Steves, I, I widen the back door. The back door was not as for, wide. For, last for someone who is as open-minded <laughs> as you. Open-minded? Can't you understand Dan, I'm not that, that I have been around rock stars and baseball and football but players? But you were never around a my closeted gay travel my life, guide. My entire life. Dan, Dan, again, I'm not. You know what? I blame myself <laughs> for not being a better broadcaster, for not being a better communicator. Hi, the wonders of Lucerne are next. Next, I explain why a man named Daniel Filato. <laughs> Why I touched him. Sure, he loves Bruce Springsteen. He loves when Bruce Springsteen makes his home runs. He loved, He lived with Mark Grace, who seemed to be a bit of Neanderthal when he called my assistant and said some gorilla is on the phone saying, Oh, Dan Filato wants to meet you. I said, We've gone through these prank calls before, you bastard. There's no one who likes Italian beef and the Cubs and Bruce Springsteen or likes me, Rick Steves. No one has that open of a mind. I was wrong. <laughs> there is someone. Mark tried to call it Bruce Springsteen, but he thought it might not be the best thing in the world since he was the first person to date Bruce's ex-wife after the oh, marriage broke up. And more and more <laughs> deflecting facts come out of Dan's mouth as he desperately tries to get us off the subject of him loving Rick Steves. He blurts out facts that may or may not be right just to get the attention off of him. Bruce dated his late waitress. <laughs> You, you, your voice kind of sounds like him on where you, you go like a. There's, a here's, there's my, here's you meeting him. You ready? There's another guy that I admire that much, but I he died, <laughs> he died right before I could I could. Uh, and it's apropos of today. So what are you talking about? There? There's a guy that uh, Star Wars is based on. Joseph Campbell wrote The Power of Myth. Obi Wan Kenobi. And he boy, was it was this, hard to crowbar that out of you. <laughs> he was this amazing. <laughs> he was this amazing uh, professor at the University of Hawaii. Uh, uh, and we, <laughs> and when we went, we would what? go to Hawaii every year and do the show for two weeks. Steve Hawaii. Dahl and Gary Meyer. Yes. And right, the very first person I had a couple of days off, and I wanted to meet Joseph Campbell, and he yes. died Joseph. right before I got to meet him. So you think a, you, you think it was suicide? <laughs> No. What does my day look like today? The number one series yeah. on PBS of all time is Joseph Campbell: The Power of Myth. Mm. <laughs> what, is, what does he sound like? He talks about like but, you would love him. You would love the power like? of myth. The power of myth. Yes. He did the he did the series with Bill Moyers. Bill Moyers. Bill Moyers and I go through the flesh paddle. 
<laughs> the flesh paddle that I first discovered with the Indians of Amsterdam. I was a British explorer hired by the Dutch to find a new passageway to West India to bring the riches of that world back to Queen Elizabeth. By mistake, I stumbled over the Western world. That's when I came through the canal. The canal was not as wide as it was when we first had gone there. I said, let's widen the canal. What do we do that with? Our flesh paddles. I began to widen the Spanish canal with my flesh paddle. I said to Dan Filato, I said, I know it's odd for you to use your flesh paddle for this particular, particular task, but are you willing to do it? He was open-minded, open-assed, and open wonder. By the end of the day, we were covered in There blood. is no quirky person like that that you admire. Quirky person? Yeah, you. Okay, is there anybody you know, are you a fan of in life that at this age, or at any age, that you had these kind of strong feelings for as a fan? Well, I could s say who I'm a huge fan of, but if they were here hanging with us, I think I'd be able to talk to them. I wouldn't be like, uh, There's nobody on that I don't list. think I get like I, that. I'm not, I'm like, I'm oh, the same, yeah. I'm the same way. I'd be like, oh, he's here, this is cool. I'm I, at, this age, at, the, at this age, I'm the same way. Okay, there's the setup. Now, we're going to take it to another level. Now I want you to hear what this guy sounds like. Oh, okay, no. here's him on PBS. Play it very loud, Dan. Play, play it from the beginning. <laughs> play a whole thing. And dreamy chocolate. Yep, we must be in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. Let it go. <laughs> Rick Steves has a theme. <laughs> Does he talk, Dan? What, 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 is this the theme? We don't have the rights to it, Bob. Paul Anchor, right? This? It's coming. When does he talk, Dan? <laughs> this is the opening theme. You <laughs> could have fast forwarded. What are we seeing when we when you Well, hear? I admire guys who have themes. What do you see when you hear? <laughs> Belgium is one of Europe's great secrets. 500 years ago, a trade boom left it with dazzling art and architecture. And today, it's re-emerging as the trade capital of Europe. For travelers, it's a breeze. Everything's close together, well-organized, there's almost no language barrier, and the people, they're wonderful. <laughs> Enjoying the highlights of Belgium, we start in Bruges. Benoit canals, fanciful gilded architecture, green Flemish masterpieces, and, according to locals, can he the pick best words with more S's in the world. Them? Where else can you bike along a canal, savor heavenly chocolate, wow. <laughs> and see a Michelangelo, all within earshot of a bell tower with a hyperactive <laughs> Caroline. Then we head for Brussels, home Brussels. of Europe's most magnificent medieval square and capital of the European Union. <laughs> Almost lost between Germany and France in the middle of Europe, tiny Belgium is easy to overlook. But we'll see why it's worth discovering. After exploring Bruges, we'll ride the train to the capital. Bruges? Bruges Pinksy. <laughs> We're starting in Brugge, as the Flemish people who live in this part of Belgium call their town. The French-speaking half of the country and English speakers call it Bruges. <laughs> However you choose to pronounce it, it comes from the Viking word for wharf. In other words, it's been a trading center for a long time. About a thousand years ago, the city grew wealthy as the most important textile market in Northern Europe. Back then, the city's canals provided merchants smooth transportation. Today, they provide visitors smooth photo ops. A short cruise shows off the town's old wealth. By the 14th century, Bruges's population was 40,000, as large as London's. Okay, show them as now the for the last minute. Show them what you're looking Between northern and southern Europe, it was an economic powerhouse. I gotta wait till we come back. All right, you know what, stop. Just, we have enough. We have in the 15th century, while well, England and just France... Stop the thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, just, uh, just let it sink in. <laughs> that guy <laughs> is the guy who Dan is in most awe of and could not be in the same room as. <laughs> and Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> and Bruce Springsteen. Of course, anybody who's a... F uh, Would you say, Dan, you're the only one <laughs> yes. who has those two? Yes. Because when you hear Bruce Springsteen, you might go, Bob Seger, Tom Petty's your other guy. I've all, My I've other met guy's Seger. Rick Steves. He sounds exactly like that clip you play at Dan when he's all over the dog. Exactly. That's what that guy sounds like. <laughs> like oh. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Imagine that guy That's, over, over a dog. Okay, now, I, 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 I can't even begin. 
<laughs> Joe, Joe, what do you? What's your reaction to that? <laughs> it seems it, that. <laughs> I don't want to like meet any. I, almost, I don't want to meet any movie stars. I, I don't, almost I don't feel like you're more athletes. I'm sick of them. I like Rick Steves. Okay, <laughs> I feel like you're. Fu- I have you're fucking with no. Me too, I have bit. some. Me too. And Dan, there's a woman that. If you are, it's the be- this is I, but it's going on a bit too long. It's like Before, Andy Kaufman. He's like fucking with us. There was a. I kind of want to see his face for about four or five him. years. I'm he's, sick of him. I'm sick of the athlete. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like he has a turtleneck on. Does he have a turtleneck on? <laughs> Very <laughs> turtleneck sounding. He looks. He doesn't look like it. It's not impressive what he looks like. <laughs> this guy's had a show for 20 years. He's the number one fundraiser on PBS. <laughs> All around the country. Now you feel stupid, Joe? <laughs> His books sell in the millions. They're okay. a whole okay. wall. Okay. 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 His latest My book. dream is to see stop Rick it. Steves stop and Dan. Artie Lang. No, no. Okay, Dan, stop it. Does he give His talks? Latest, His latest book. His latest book. Uh, what's it called? I swear to God, this is not a joke. His latest book is Rick Steves <laughs> Seeing Europe Through the Back Door. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Steves. His back door. Seeing Europe Through the Back Door. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to say. He has a super effeminate voice. I don't want to sound... Uh, Anti-gay or anything, but he, he's, he oh, sounds, just let it go, he Joe. His son, he sounds, a, his son has a much deeper voice. He, he sounds, sounds dude. He his sounds, son does a travel show. He too sounds now. like he's Richard Simmons with a passport. <laughs> That's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a feminine voice. I've dated chicks who sound more manly. <laughs> They, my girlfriend Dana was like Andrew Dice Clay compared to this guy. <laughs> then we're going to Brussels. And then Bruges. <laughs> and then when we get to Brussels, we find out there's a new way to get to Lucerne. And if that's not exciting enough, we go on a little trip on a gondola. We go through the ass of a gondola rider. <laughs> Is he gay? No. He's, he's got married. Married. I think married, he's got yeah. a new girlfriend. So is Liberace. Yeah. 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 Dan, you don't, think, you don't think it's possible he might be gay? I Do you like Anthony Bourdain? No. You, you uh, hate I, him I like that him guy personally. such a misogynist. I like him personally. I just don't like him. How do you know him personally? Because he's... I've you don't know watched... He meets all travel guys. We've no, had yeah, a, you don't know him, Okay, though. yeah, I know him really well. Actually, I do know him really well. Anthony Bourdain? Anthony Bourdain. Okay, well, dude, what, okay and, fine. <laughs> So and you chose. I don't know. Don't get mad at me. You never told me that. Yeah. So how, do you you know like, Anthony, how do you know Anthony Bourdain? You because like, when this book came out, we had him on the Steve Dahl show. <laughs> <laughs> so I know John Bon Jovi then, then, because he was on Stern. You don't know Anthony. Bon- I do. We've uh, we've gone out to dinner. Sick of the bullshit. Really? <laughs> what restaurant did he pick? Uh, Moto in Chicago. Oh. Call him. <laughs> Got his number? I don't have his number anymore. Uh, uh, you know him really well. <laughs> I know him. No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> you know me really well, Dan. You don't know him well. Whenever he came into Chicago, he would call and say, hey, do you want me to come on the show or do you want to go out to dinner? Yeah, because he's trying to plug something. Right, but when he, when we didn't have the show, if we were on vacation or something like that, look, there's a huge fire over there. We got to get this guy on the podcast. <laughs> there's there's no a huge way. fire across the river. Oh, no, it's not. Don't worry about it. There's oh. fucking smoke coming out of him. Um, That's the gay smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could get him on the show. That's that's the level of this guy. Dan, if we I get did, him on right if, now, if I didn't know you, everything would point to this being, you know, gay. You being gay. <laughs> well, there's no chance of that happening. I know. Well, I mean, again, it's just. What it's, do you? Uh, do you have posters of him in your? No, Dan, don't, I don't. Have, I have his get, books. I have all his. You books. can't get mad at me for being fascinated. <laughs> no, but I just can't. Everybody's fascinated. I don't understand how you, someone who's talented and artistic, you can't appreciate even though it's a, a travel series he has something Dan uh, uh, the other thing you is don't. the other thing is he's a hack even in the travel world he's fucking even in that world he's not good at what he does there's a million more people I'd rather watch than you know what does he do right because he doesn't go to the fucking four seasons what he does finds he the do, best places Dan? it's he's a budget guy he goes in he the, the back b- door he, <laughs> he finds he, takes he finds the best the deals cool shitty for stuff. his his viewers oh he does that's yes. his hook that's say, uh, say, here's a scenario. <laughs> You're in Brussels, and you don't have insurance for your AZT medication. You need money for it. <laughs> Just a scenario I'm throwing out. You know, this could be, uh, yeah, it could be anything. It could be aspirin. With, in, this, in this scenario... Apparently, you didn't need to see the Saturday Night Live couple of sketches on him. Did, no, did I really? didn't. Yeah, they did. No, as a yeah. matter of fact, I didn't. 
did the. Uh, <laughs> Who guy plays him? <laughs> does this guy go to? Who America? plays him? Kate McKinnon. <laughs> <laughs> does, he go to Amer- does he go to American places, cities? He just has recently, but he's mostly Europe. Europe okay. and uh, he's gone to China and South America a couple of times. Just say you're in Kentucky and you can't get a marriage license for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't know what the scenario would be. For some reason, they don't want you to get a marriage license. <laughs> I'm going to Atlanta tomorrow. I thought maybe you could get I, some I know. tips. I, I plugged it for you. Any last tips? Couple days. You probably shit on me nonstop. <laughs> uh, no. Say this was too dominant of a conversation. <laughs> Say you're in Europe. Say you're in Atlanta and you want to see Joe Matarese <laughs> at the laugh- <laughs> at the laughing skull. skull. <laughs> What's the back door Say in you Atlanta? Wanna, <laughs> Say you want to laugh your skull <laughs> off. <laughs> he doesn't do American cities. Well, how okay. about uh, Italy? Does he have any good? Uh, oh yeah, any, sure. He, he's he, got big books on Italy. So what have, have you learned? Uh, like <laughs> yes, all his tips? yes, yes. Have you? Do you ever, does he like, give I you? A, would, does he give you a step-by-step guide of where to go? Yes, and he writes. He does his own uh, maps by hand. He has a guy so that he doesn't steal. He he, he, he has a what? He has a guy that does the map. A guy for that does a map for right. What are those books called that you buy for like a Rick Steves Europe? No, like there's there's like books. Zagat. Not Z- Zagat. Uh, not Zagat. That's for food. Uh, I know, Michelin. but 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 do you, does the guy write these maps? Or does he lay the maps? On Steve's back, <laughs> <laughs> and write them just because it's convenient for the position they might be in. Uh, I get it. Okay, go ahead. This go is ahead. Rick Steve's. Ready, Stacey? Go. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Eleven thousand dollars. Flair for fashion, Edinburgh. Oh. oh, Dan, again with the opening. And Her Majesty's yacht, and check out the new Parliament. Edinburgh has two distinct halves, its medieval old town and its 18th century new town. It's all split by a grand park. Its Royal Mile, which leads from the castle through the old town down to the palace, is one of Europe's great walks. We start our visit where the city did, at the Edinburgh Castle, the fortified birthplace of the city over a thousand years ago. This imposing symbol of Edinburgh sits high above the city. While the castle has been both a fort and a royal residence since the 11th century, most of the buildings today are from its more recent use as a military There's garrison. no way he's gay! He sounds like Mr. Rogers. Crowds exactly. gather, as traditionally, each day at 1 o'clock, the big gun is fired. <laughs> something to set their clocks back. Why 1 o'clock and not noon? It costs Why? the frugal Scots 11 fewer rounds. The big gun is fired! <laughs> Your admission comes with a fine guided tour. Ah. Welcome to the castle, ladies and gentlemen. It takes roughly about. All right, sounds like I could go to Joseph Campbell. (laughs) (laughs) The big gun is fired. He has an odd voice. Yeah, no kidding. He sounds a little bit like Re- Ro- like Mr. Now, as, as a woman, a woman have gaydar. Is, do you think there's any way? Is it surprising you that some people might think he's gay? <laughs> no, he sounds neutered. I don't know. He sounds like he's a leprechaun or something. Okay. He sounds like this, and then we're going to go to the firing yeah, game. Yeah, he's, he's very he's, happy. Yeah, exactly. It's a weird voice. My so. friend Allie, who uh, works for Apple Vacations, just said that Rick Steves favored her treat just now. Look. Oh, really? What does that mean? Favor her treat. She texted you that? Yeah, she just texted me. <laughs> because she saw she saw you get well she listened what to the was podcast. The tweet? Uh she she said that uh I can't here I'll tell you. That's so something about so Dan, Dan, so Dan, is Dan, not Dan has people in her lives. Dan has people in his life that, that text him that Rick Steve's favorited a tweet. No, because she saw you guys giving me a bunch of crap about it. Okay. <laughs> I want to know what the tweet that was. That was an odd voice. That was a very odd voice. Okay. Oh, there's a Rick Steve's pa- fan page on... Uh... Oh. Of course there is. You were able to be around the greatest running back ever. You could take his... Second greatest. Walter could Payton. you take Rick Steve's pants away? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, wait a minute. What this would is, this is a year? great question. Yeah. <laughs> Say Rick Steve's... No, Dan, this is a very serious thing. Say the same scenario. Rick Steve's has an injury. He can't get his pants off. No. You wouldn't take Rick Steve's no, pants off. No, you'd let your hero just linger there. No, uh, yeah, I would. I Who would, would you go get? To, to, I would get some type of nurse or hospice nurse or something. <laughs> like I, I, an hospice. <laughs> like happy pooped his pants and he had to get his pants off. Like what would you Listen, do? Listen, son, get over I here. Just, <laughs> I've got to take. Can you get my pants? I made a special exception for the greatest, second greatest running back of all. But time. you won't make an exception for your biggest hero of all time. Who can make connections <laughs> yeah, with people just, that you can't? Uh, I can't. I can't. You can't? Rick Steve says... You can't say I hello need... to him. How's he going to take his pants off? No, but right? I'm saying Rick Steve says, come here, son. I need to get my pants off. <laughs> so if Julia Binoche wants you to take her pants off, would you Absolutely. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> See, he's... he's, he's uh... 
You wouldn't be nervous. So, so who are you more enamored with, Rick Steves or Julian Pinoch? It's Rick Steves. R- Rick Steves. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet's gotten older. <laughs> oh my god, that is fucking crazy. <laughs> So the, 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 there's a chick you're enamored with like crazy and a no, guy. No, there was you're more enamored. 2001. You wouldn't I, be able to. What is a year after well, doing anything? It's right now. In the oh, wait a minute. Time. Listen. So in other words, <laughs> you won't. Now I'm enamored with my wife. That's who I'm. No, I, I know. Okay. Whatever. But I'm saying. Uh, wow. That is that is impressive. So you're more into. If you could be trapped on a desert island with one of them. Rick Steves or Julia Pinoch. Well, the it. sex would be Julia Pinoche. <laughs> what does that but mean? How do, you know having, how do you know you're having sex with anybody? <laughs> well, well, but the emotional relationship would be Rick Steve. Julia Pinoche, I think. I, I would. I would how do you know you'd have sex? I yeah. would be Julia Pinoche. But if it were to travel around Europe, I would go with Rick Steves. <laughs> 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 Look at that. <laughs> First of all, Dan, what makes you think you're definitely having sex? I said you're on a fucking island with her. Well, there's the last people. Well, if it was a last, th- no, that's the scenario. Would, she would probably kill herself first. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Would you is it, Would you rape her? You would force yourself on <laughs> If you knew there was no uh, consequence, would you force yourself on you, honestly, I think could, about I it. could talk you, my you, way in wouldn't there. You rather be, wouldn't you rather be with Rick Steves on the island? <laughs> no. Yes, no, you would. I think no. deep down he would. See, you're... now you're smart. We asked this question too late. Now you're smart enough to know you're not going to give this up anymore because <laughs> no. you'll get shit for it. I think deep down, without question, Dan would no, rather be no. on the island with Rick Steves. Yes, you no. would. No, I would Well, you'd mostly connect with Rick Steves but have sex with Julia Pinoche. Maybe that's what well, Okay, well, so would you like an option where you just have sex with Julia Pinoche and the other uh, 23 <laughs> hours and 57 minutes you're with uh, Rick Steves? If he had a book about the island, you know... <laughs> A book, what does that mean? He needs a book about the island? What, how, is he so good at that to where you could put him on an island he's never been on before and just give him like an hour to explore and he'd come back with shortcuts, he'd know the whole place. Like, <laughs> while you were having sex with Juliet, guess what? I was working on the post-sex trip, the tour. I'm going to take you around. This island is wonderful. It reminds me of a small section of Borneo that I used to go to the Lucerne Stadium Hippopotamus Holler. Again, it, it, that's for all the actresses or hot chicks that could be on that list where you, like Rick Steves, get the sweats. <laughs> Think about the question, Dan. I asked you, are there any actresses <laughs> that you react to the same way you react to the man who does a travel show on PBS? And you said, Julia Well, Bonos. no, because once the actresses open their mouth, I lose interest. What happens when Rick Steves <laughs> opens his mouth? I start to sweat. What do you lose? <laughs> But what disappears when he opens his mouth? <laughs> what the fuck? Everything you say, just you dig the hole, the creep hole deeper and deeper when she opens her mouth. <laughs> Rick, I open my mouth, and guess what? Nothing but wonders come out. And nothing but wonders go in. <laughs> when Juliet Pinocho opens her mouth, she better be saying someone else's words. <laughs> She's an actress. She's vapid and shallow. When Rick Steves opens his mouth, guess what comes out? Joys. But you are. Uh, no, it has nothing to do with their abilities or their talents. What does it have to you do? You do with not it? think it's something deeper than that? No, maybe. It's not. Okay, now play. Okay, that, based on that question, <laughs> okay. let's play Rick Steves for him. Hello. <laughs> Just to, you don't even know. Hi, I'm Rick Steve, back with more of the best of Europe. This time, Europe. we're enjoying the edible, drinkable, scenic, and floatable delights of one of my favorite corners of France, Burgundy. Thanks for joining us. That sounds like an SNL character. Like exact, like he, come on. <laughs> Hello. Okay, no, keep playing it, Dan. You know, it, it's the it's the theme song. I think it's something. I'm not saying I'm not like you know, trying to. Uh, I think you're. Make fun. I just I think it's something say? other than that. I think he re- maybe reminds you of an uncle that you that, that touched you as a child. <laughs> <laughs> an uncle with a all pre- hands. A priest I had. I think there's something more than him just having the ability to negotiate. <laughs> Calm, he can cultivated, ne- serene, where nature is as sophisticated as the people. That. The traditions are strong here. If you're looking for the quintessential French culture. You'll find it in Burgundy. That now, I, in this show. if I were in the same room as him, I would run out too, but for a completely <laughs> different reason. Uh, is this Rick? 
Dan? Mm-hmm. Okay, here's, here's a clip, Rick. Every neighborhood has a time-honored gathering place. <laughs> Petak, also known as Bool, offers the perfect escape for friends. <laughs> This competitive yet convivial game where friends toss metal balls with the same precision their fathers provides the ideal antidote to the pressures of modern life. He said metal balls get, like he accentuated the gayness of that. I stopped for a second. Uh, Riviera, on the banks of the... Okay, Mike, what is your, is there any chance Rick is not gay? Um, I would say he's definitely had... A hundred times more gay sex than I. Have. Okay. <laughs> and well, he, he sounds. He is well traveled. I mean, he sounds very conservative and proper. Right, he is definitely. Yeah, but, but I, I would say he's taking it in the ass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound like a voice that has come out or not come out though? Oh, well, that's a come out. Well, he hasn't he's, come out though. Well, that's he, a voice, not but he hasn't. Out. No, he's that's not. A, no, he, no, he's no. very much married and oh, very. Okay. He's got kids. That sounds like a voice full of cum. Is what uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I listen. I, you're saying it, not me. Of course, I am saying it. Uh, so now, what would you think about a guy who can't be in the same room as Rick and shakes? Just be, you think it's more than his negotiating skills, right? Yeah, I mean that's it, it is a little bit odd. I I don't know why shakes and and I don't I, I don't know. I'm just meeting Dan, but and now you said you said you have your gaydar up for someone in the room, All right? Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> uh, Dan, how do you explain this? I I can't explain it. Okay. I wish it, you know, I wish I could explain it. Uh, for Jason and for Mike, I have been in radio and show business since I was 15. I just at some point got sick of athletes and and rock stars Street guys. and all <laughs> Once again, Mike thinks someone in the room is gay and I'm just that's all I'm going to say and it ain't me. Oh, okay. So I I just, at some point, I just, it's oblivious to me, and Artie knows I have no problem going up to people. I have no problem going up to people saying, come on the podcast or come on the what TV show mean? when we were doing the TV show. I had no problem going up to the celebrities. I don't care. It doesn't make a difference to me. But there was just, you know, I had watched Rick Steves for 20 years on PBS, and he, and I've gone to Europe for 20 years. I was born in Europe. I have relatives there, right. and he has this ability that I don't like to get, you know, three bedroom suites for eighty dollars a night, and he has the ability to blow off a line <laughs> in a museum, you know, that I don't have the ability to do, and I'm in awe of that. And when my wife was asked to host his, uh, to she was a chocolatier when she was asked to host his wife an was event. A chocolatier. <laughs> I I couldn't I, I I could not. She makes chocolate. Okay, okay. we'll say right. that. Yeah, because that's we don't. A, that's a fancy word. Chocolate is a very gay word. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I just could not. It's on. I see that on Grinder all the time. Chocolate here. Yeah. Job. Yeah. Chocolate here. Someone who likes black guys. <laughs> That's, that answer, though, that, that was like a very congressional... Like, you sounded like you were answering in front of a congressional I, the, I was like, the same, like I was the like, same what's way... What's even odder is you feel comfortable sharing this with I was the same way... way uh, well, because I thought, you know, you were my friends. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we are your friends. I well... Mean, I, 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 we just find... But see, non-friends would keep it in and go, well, that's weird. You know, no, we're talking behind your back. We're talking to your... To your I face. was the same way around Bruce Springsteen a couple of times. Now I've met Springsteen... But that makes sense. And that makes sense. And he can't get deals on hotel. Yeah, he cannot. <laughs> no. He has somebody do it for Right, yeah. exactly. He gets Rick Steves. He calls yeah, right. he does. You mentioned Bruce Springsteen. Let me ask you somebody about who I think gets very gay around Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Governor Chris Christie. Yeah, he does. What yeah. is that about? And, well, he's just a big fan, yeah. Now, Springsteen is one of those guys where a lot of people don't like him because of his fans. They're like, he's one of those people where it's not about his work, it's about his fans act stupid around him. And I get that, I understand. I'm a big uh, Bruce Springsteen fan, where I'm from and all that stuff, but uh, I, I understand. Well, they had a falling uh, out within the last couple of months. Well, it's well, they couldn't be different, uh, on, on more different ends of the spectrum politically, that's right. for sure. Springsteen is very, very left, and of course, uh, uh, Christie isn't. Like and and Christie said... Uh, Springsteen goofed on him about the, uh, you know, t- uh, the Bridgegate bridge game, thing, yeah. yeah. But he also said in a recent interview, Christie said that his new favorite musician of all time is John Bon Jovi. Right. And uh, 
Oh, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, so he's he, a flip He might be good. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, now that is gay. Well, that's I, gay. I mean, yeah. again, the, the, if I said I was be, that way about John Bon Jovi, I walked right up to him and talked to him about uh, baseball for forty-five minutes. Dan, the Rick Steves thing is just no. You should stop telling people it. <laughs> I'm telling you because it's it's odd. Okay. It's not odd. It's very, Jason. Is it odd? Well, to to, to get nervous. Yeah, and yeah. shaky. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I you know, maybe I have to see this Rick Steves. I, I, well, you heard him. Play a little yeah, bit. I don't play a little bit more. And what I heard is I really don't want to see it. Yeah. Listen, it's like a deep thought with summer, Jack Handy Paris City government like closes a... an expressway and brings a colorful urban beach <laughs> it's to its like... people. They truck in potted palm trees, hammocks, <laughs> lounge chairs, and 2,000 tons of sand to create this popular fun zone. It's a perfect chance to see Paris at play <laughs> and play with Paris. Wow. Chocolatiers come Away from, from the river, parks provide another peaceful oasis. <laughs> Great for enjoying the moment okay. with friends and family. There's no way in hell he, he has a wife and kids. He does. He does. Wife, wife and kids. And Dan is very, very adamant that he's not gay. Dan doesn't think Rick Steves is gay at all. Because he can never have an idol who's gay, right? Because <laughs> you're very... You're very loud about how you don't like gayness and you, you love women. And you're he's very loud about when a hot chick comes on the TV. Yeah. Make sure he yells about it. <laughs> Look at that ass! <laughs> My God, I'd like to give it to her. <laughs> Come on, guys. What, what are you all gay? That's exactly. You're right. hot that chick is. <laughs> then when you go, why are you yelling that? Oh, what are you saying? Look at that guy. Look at her tits. I guess I'm the gay one. I'm the only one who noticed her tits. <laughs> That's a great Chicago. I don't know. I'm just 48. I, I'm 48 and I acted like this when I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Look at the fucking gams on her. <laughs> I, well, is, no, I'm the only one here who likes chocolate tears. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm the only chocolate here lover here. Whatever. <laughs> Fucker. Boy, Dennis Rodman, who I have since met because of my D-list uh, fashion celebrity status. And uh, he was a, adopted by a white family and, you know, became this amazing athlete and did make it to the NBA at a very young age, the worm. Very disconcerting in those piston shorts that are way up high. The, the fashion uh, difference that Jordan came in with and made the pants real long and baggy. Yeah. Dennis uh, Rodman needed that. His cock was coming out of that fucking oh, thing. Holy shit. It's the one year Rick Steves had piston season tickets. <laughs> Look at the Wonder Worm. Look at the worm on the pistons. Uh, a special edition. A special edition of the Rick Steves uh, Channel 13. What's the name of the Rick Steves show? Coming in the back door. Travel with Rick Steves. Travel with Rick Steves, a special edition this season. Rick, that's me. I'll be speaking in the third person about Rick myself because my therapist taught me that's going to help me deal with whatever it is I'm dealing with. He says, there's something deep down that's looking to get out, Rick. What is it? What could it be? Is, your, is it your love of travel? Is it uh, the, the, first, uh, tr the first passport with even numbers and in ink that you can be proud of? Workmanship, craftsmanship. I want that on my passport the same way I want it on my kitchen surface. Brussels. Brussels is one of my favorite cities. Is that the reason I want to travel? There's something deep down inside. That really came out when I saw the Wonder Worm, Dennis Rodman, and those short shorts. Call me crazy, but I love the game of basketball. It's like a ballet. It's like a ballet. It's like watching the Nutcracker Suite. <laughs> When I see Dennis Rodman go up for one of those B bounds that they go up for, whenever the ball gets out of the uh, other man's hands and they forget to dribble it with one hand and they dribble it with two hands and they get called for an unnecessary double dibble, and I and I and I, and I go, up, that's the Wonder Worm doing his thing. He didn't double dibble. How dare you, referee? You're racist. I say racist because it has a C and an S in it. Well, Rick would have been a fan of those uh, Supersonics teams. Supersonic. Of course, Seattle Supersonics. That's the best name for a guy like Rick Steves. Hey, are you going to play the Supersonics? You wonder worm? The Pistons and the Supersonics. The Rick Steves special. I have front row seats. That's right. Front row seats for the wonder worm and his short shorts. And those high, those high socks, those high white socks going up that African-American brown knee that I love so much. The knees are not as scraped up as mine. For some reason, my knees are scraped up. My wife always asks me, what are you doing on your knees? They're scraped up. 
Dennis Rodman's an athlete. He's a wonder worm, and he doesn't have scraped up knees. As a matter of fact, his knees are black and glistening and wonderful. And I say I noticed the same thing about that in his rump. <laughs> and then our children begin to cry. No one knows why. No one knows why. So I, I continue to scrape up those knees. I don't know what happens. I take an Ambien. I have a glass of Chardonnay. And I'm thinking about the best way to go in the back door of Brussels. And then I pass out. I wake up. It's dawn. I hear my wife weeping and saying some prayers in the kitchen. She's talking to St. Jude in a house coat that she just ironed. She, she keeps saying, St. Jude, he did it again. Why did he do it again? I wake up. I wake up with some dried up mayonnaise on my, uh, my cheek that apparently went on the uh, tuna fish salad sandwich I love so much in the middle of the night. I, uh, my wife tells me I love tuna fish salad in the middle of the night with extra mayo. I don't remember eating a, a tuna fish salad ever. It's the only time I crave it is when I'm passed out after that ambient and Chardonnay. <laughs> uh, I don't crave tuna fish any other time except in the middle of the night when that thing happens that I don't know. When I, come, when I become that travel werewolf. I call it the travel <laughs> werewolf comes out of me. I, I start to grow. The travel a, werewolf. I'm the travel <laughs> werewolf. I start barking at the moon. <laughs> Something happens. I go into that Dennis Rodman <laughs> wonder worm. Wonder worm weave. And I'm rooting for the Supersonics. I'm rooting for the Supersonics and the Pistons. And I'm like, I have season tickets. Why am I not there? And I remember I gave it to my friend, Dante. <laughs> Dante went. My wife never met Dante. Neither did my son. But Dante, for some reason, every time I get a fresh scrape on my knees, for some reason, Dante has a scrape on his inner thigh. And it's also coincides with the time I forget to take out my retainer. My dentist gets all <laughs> over me of that because I want straight teeth. He said, you're going to make it in the travel business. You need straight teeth, Rick. I take out one night. I take out that goddamn excuse the language, <laughs> that GD retainer. I get scraped up knees. I'm in a blackout. And of course, Dante has bruised inner thighs. But guess what you get as the audience? A backdoor into Brussels. <laughs> and I get a backdoor into Dante. Ah! Sometimes I like to joke about it. Anyway, that's what happens. And my wife and I have a great relationship. But lay off the Chardonnay and Ambien. That's your Rick Steves tip for today. <laughs> Rick Steves likes to give out tips. And uh, let me tell you something. I'm having a great, great time in the beautiful city of... Uh, you, know what, you know what I like to do every once in a while? I like to say... This is what I like to do. I like to say, I like to say the name of this movie. A Bridge to Tatabithia. <laughs> For no reason, I'll take an Ambien and a Chardonnay and I'll be on the subway and I'll go, a bridge to Tarabithia. And then I say, for no reason, wash your under cottage. <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of times Dante will call me and say, why did you call me last night? You took some Chardonnay and some Ambien. Uh, there were 53 straight voicemails my wife cannot make out. And all they say is, Dante, wash your under cottage. Signed, Steve's. <laughs> Signed, RS. Watch, wash your under cottage. What exactly is an undercarriage, you might ask? Well, that's the tease. After the commercial, I reveal what an undercarriage is. A lot of you might think it's just a taint. No, it's not just a taint. It's, it's a taint of love. It's God's taint. Wash your undercarriage. Now, coming up next on the Travel Channel, on Rick Steve's Travel Channel, we go to Disney World on Homosexual Day and wear a red shirt. Why? Because we just had red shirts that were clean. A lot of you say, well... We read in the, in the pamphlet that after the evil Nazi Walt Disney perished, the gays and Jews were the people who, who built Disney World revolted. And they said, we're going to have our own day. And if you're gay, wear a red shirt. If you're Jewish, don't wear any shirt. Just wear your dreidels. Wear your dreidels and big hat on a humid Orlando day. And when you sweat, we'll go to your taint and we'll turn that into an undercutter job. A sweaty taint on an Amish person is the perfect platform, the perfect blank canvas to paint a taint. We're going to do some taint painting later on the Rick Steves travel broadcast. We're going in through the back door, into Orlando, and we're going to take the tilt world We're going to take the epicenter, Epcot Center. What's next on Epcot Center? Dick City in Thailand. <laughs> Rick Steves, Bustles, Supersonics, the Wonder Worm of Dennis Rodman. That's what I'm trying to get at. He was adopted by a white family, not an African-American family, at the age of, I believe, nine, was adopted from the streets of hell. I think he was from Chicago. Of course, he had enormous ears, enormous teeth. And I'll tell you what, 
every once in a while in my ambient Chardonnay nights, those ears become handled. Those ears become very, very practical. God put them there. Evolution put them there. Because I use those, you know, the the ambient Chardonnay, Rick Steves, every once in a while will use those Dennis Rodman Wonder Worm ears like two little big handles of love. I grab them and I just pump them towards my stomach. It's great for your lats. It's great for your abs. And you release, you release all the tension. And tension comes in many forms. We all know that. It comes in anger. It comes in striking out against a loved one in anger. It comes in violence. It comes in bad language. Sometimes it comes in your mouth. Rick Steves. <laughs> Sometimes it comes in your mouth in a white liquidy form that can make egg drop soup out of any jacuzzi. I've done it before. Me and the cast of Two Broke Girls and the whole writing staff, I'll take them out sometimes. If you want to see the cover of Legendary Comedy, if it were a magazine, the cover would be those Two Broke Girls every goddamn week. Good joke after good joke. <laughs> Good joke after good joke. How do they do it? People say Rick Steves. How do they keep making two broke girls <laughs> funny week after week after week? Is it Whitney Cummings? Does she run that room? Does she go in there with her little notepad on the iPad and say, listen, I have $200 million off the syndication already. The comedy gods are a brewing. They want a new season. Rick, what's the seventh season going to be like? Will it be as good as seasons one through six? Is that possible to keep up that good work? Is it possible to keep up the wit and banter that must go on in the two broke girls' writing room? <laughs> oh, my God. It must be like the old Your Show of Shows, the original Saturday Night Live, those SCTV shows with Rick Moranis and John Candy throwing out wonderful ideas. Wonderful ideas. Is that what the two broke girls' writing room is? Of course it is. It's that exciting. It's that witty. It's that wonderful. And we're going to break into that two broke girls' wonder room. I'm working on two broke girls, one cup. Of course. <laughs> a takeoff of a wonderful YouTube video I saw. My gracious. Uh, if you guys know Rick Steves well, you know I don't like the brown. That's what we call it. I don't like the brown. I don't go brown. I don't go downtown brown. <laughs> I have friends who do, though. I have friends who say, hey, Rick Steves, do you want to go downtown brown tonight on us? And I go, no, I'm not downtown brown. Then I see them go downtown brown, and I'm like, my gracious. He would have been growing up when Jack Sigma was big. What's Jack Sigma got to do it? What's, it. what's the deal with Jack Sigma? Big white center? Why do you bring that up? <laughs> well, he was on that Supersonics team. What's the reference, though? Why Jack Rick Sons from Seattle. Yeah, I know, but why Jack Sigma when I was talking about the brown? You know what the brown is, right? Why did you bring up Jack Sigma? Just because he was on the Supersonics? Well, you said that Rick wouldn't like... Rick wouldn't like what? The brown. The brown? What do you mean, the brown? No. Well, no, you know, you don't know what brown is. Uh, brown is shit. Oh. Brown is taking a dump right in your mouth. Oh, God. That's what downtown... Did I have to point that out for you? How <laughs> grotesque are you? How racist are you? You thought I meant black people? <laughs> yes. No, I mean shit. Is that your way of pointing out that black people and shit are the same color? <laughs> oh, no. My grandfather used to have an argument about racism. He would shut up a lot of black people who would come over the house. They'd have an argument about race, black and white, literally about the colors, black and white. And after a few uh, flaming shots of Zambuca, my grandfather would say to the African-American friend of his, he'd go, okay, I'll sum it up like this. This ends the argument. What color is come? What color is shit? And then they'd shut up. Of course, I don't agree with that. It is an excellent point, though, when you think about it. One is equated with the greatest feeling a human being can have. A wonderful feeling you can trust. There's no bad male orgasm ever. It's all, as Woody Allen says in Manhattan, right on the money. <laughs> Women say they have wrong orgasms, bad orgasms. They're not trustworthy. <laughs> Remind you of any group of people? <laughs> and they're equated with a disgusting act that somehow God let us do. To remind us every once in a while he's in charge. And every once in a while he goes, yeah, the white stuff will come out of your cock and you'll feel like Superman for two seconds. <laughs> And you realize you're looking at the guy on your couch in Rick Steves' hand. <laughs> oh, God. Rick Steves' Wonder Worm. He'll say, listen, how can, you, how can the white stuff come out when you're looking at somebody brown? It's a paradox. When I look at Dennis Rodman in those early videos, and I have every one of them. I have every one of them downloaded, if you will. I'm a downloader. I'm a brown loader. I'm a downtown brown loader. I... I actually thought you were talking about downtown Freddie Brown. Downtown Freddie Brown. How about downtown Freddie Brown's Brown? How about downtown Freddie Brown downtown? Brown. Yes, Freddie Brown made a lot of us shit our pants if we were bet uh, on a, the money line on Georgetown that year, didn't we? When he threw a pass directly to another Brown. Coached by a Brown. An enormous dark Brown. Yes, 
This podcast will have us both working construction. <laughs> <I do that. laughs> We're not pointing out anything about anybody's uh, intellect or race or opinions or anything like that. There's no extra bone in the ankle. I'm not Jimmy the Geek. I'm talking from a real place. I'm talking about color. I'm talking about wonder. I'm talking about nuance. I'm pointing out that the brown color is much sexier, much sexier. And they have, a, they have that on us. And by they, I mean the browns. <laughs> The Cleveland Browns. What about the downtown Cleveland Browns? Jim Brown. What about Jim Brown? Jim Brown, downtown Tina Brown, Brown, Brown. How about eating at the ground round, baby, ground, brown? How about ground, brown, baby, ground, brown? Like a record, baby, ground, brown, brown, brown. I eat at the downtown Julie Brown, brown. At the record, baby, downtown Freddie Brown. I eat at the Jerdavian clown, clown, clowny, clown, clown. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. Did the modulation get too high? <laughs> yes. Maybe they complain about that too, don't they? <laughs> oh, he's eating a lot. And he's <laughs> yelling for no reason. Oh, really? I'm showing emotion on the radio, you cock licked? Maybe I'll do a show like Ryan Seacrest. How about that? You know, he's seen some brown. <laughs> Every once in a while on Ryan Seacrest's show, that's also, he's got a radio show that has a video component. That's the name he uses, component. <laughs> yes, I have a video component. I saw him and Seth Meyers talking about his video component one day. I swear to Christ, couldn't tell the difference between either one of them. I was across the room and I was smoking some hashish. I got it up in Montreal. Long story. I won't get into it now. I won't get into it now, but me and some of the guys from Girl and Guy Code got together. And guess what? It was a party. Those Girl and Guy Code people can really riff for a while. My God, they're funny for a good 32 seconds. And then one of them accidentally... Sp- hits their head on a pipe that was coming out of my ceiling. (laughs) And when they hit their head on the pipe accidentally, a young Asian girl with three minutes of comedy hits her head on a pipe. My God, you laugh and laugh and laugh. (laughs) And when you realize it's actually a serious injury, you laugh more. And when you realize it's infected and she may never do comedy again, you realize, (laughs) did she ever really start? And then you say, my God, how can I make fun of the cast of Girl and Guy Code? They have some unbelievable millennial observations (laughs) about dating and sex high-energy guys that aren't threatening. They would never say something disgustingly rude. They would say something sexual because that's allowed in this dumb generation's <laughs> vortex of disgustingness, vortex of boredom. There's a lot of depression without genius going on, and that's pathetic. Can you imagine the level of a brain that watches girl code? <laughs> if Tom Freston of MTV ever really watched his channel, he would never stop throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> you know who never stops throwing up either is Rick Steves. And when he throws up, it is a waterfall of white. <laughs> He's got white coming out the waterfall. He's got brown coming out the other waterfall. And every once in a while, a red color appears in both. <laughs> and that means the wonder worm Dennis Rodman scraped his cock on the dresser <laughs> before he could get the hard piece of wonder into the mouth of whoever he, he was fucking on the Travel Channel that week. <laughs> A lot of people on the Travel Channel have a lot of interesting cocks that they put in the mouths of other people on the Travel Channel. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. But the girl and guy code kids get involved, and guess what? Those kids are going to have development deals soon. And they're going to bring the... Ne- you say, where... You, you look to comedy and you go, where's the next two broke girls going to come from? <laughs> where's the next Johnny Galecki coming from? Where's the next How I Met Your Mother creator coming from? <laughs> This generation's Clint Eastwood is Neil Patrick Harris, ladies and gentlemen, and we wonder why we're losing to ISIS. <laughs> maybe we could have a gluten muffin every once in a while. So, but maybe put the gluten in the muffin. Maybe we beat Hitler because MacArthur ate gluten. <laughs> maybe, maybe we beat them in D-Day because General Patton did guess what? He ate gluten. Have some gluten, rootin' tootin' Putin, and show your downtown Josh Brown to a guy like Patton. <laughs> Yeah, Patton, we need more guys like that. That's a military guy. Patton MacArthur, the kind of guy that could take a shit right in front of you and tell you what your orders are. <laughs> That's right. Get over here, motherfucker. Hey, private... <laughs> private shithead. You're on, the, you're on the Wonder Worm team. You're going to storm... The, you're going to storm Normandy. Who's our general? Neil Patrick Harris? No. <laughs> Matthew Perry. We're living in a generation where everybody under 30 thinks Matthew Perry invented sarcasm. <laughs> He calls it Matt speak. That's right. I saw him do a lecture once at Keene University in Elizabeth. I think they paid him $20,000. He told all the students there who were fans of comedy, fans of David Schwimmer's amazing looks and eye lines, that when, well, no one rolls their eyes like David Schwimmer. No one. No one. 
You throw a close-up to David Schwimmer, and guess what? It's like kicking it out to Ray Allen with three seconds left. Good for three. Schwimmer, we need an eye roll on camera two. So ish! <laughs> Matthew Perry, then. We need a sarcastic line. Uh, there's a Ma Matthew Joey Lawrence, whatever the fuck his name is, is going to say something stupid. Stupid. Matt Lawrence, we need a sarcastic line. And guess what? Matthew Perry's right there and goes, uh, you meant what? Notice how his voice goes up at the end, dictating sarcasm. Uh, you studied where? Switch. Switch. The combination every once in a while is kind of like the 1996 Yankees, the way Joe Torrey's spelling, that's what we <laughs> called him. He would use that team like a wonder worm of love. He would go out there. If the Yankees had a one-run lead after the sixth inning, guess what? They won the game. Mariano Rivera came in for the seventh and eighth, shut them down, and then Wetland came in, bam, boom, back. One, two, three, you're out. And Don Simmer would shit in the mouth of Yogi Berra's wife, and they'd oh. go inside. Then Don Zimmer would take... Well, I'm sorry, he, Popeye. Don Zimmer would, uh, sh would uh, shit in the mouth of anybody that... Uh, <laughs> of the mother of whoever Derek Jeter was dating. And then he'd take her out to Applebee's while Jeter fucked three other women. And then he'd slowly bring her back to Jeter's apartment at 5 a.m. Call Jeter up on his universal LG cell phone on the smartphone. Finally take his tobacco out for the night. Finally change his undershorts. <laughs> And then say to Jeter, hey, Judge, Judge, Don Zimmer. I took her out to Applebee's. Yeah, this chick's hot. What do you want me to do? You're still fucking the Puerto Rican? Yeah, she was hot, too. Spoke no English, though. I mean, I'll blame English, buddy. What's the problem? <laughs> no, I don't know. No. Yeah, with the non English, the Spanish pros, I can relate to them. I played with a lot of those guys. Yeah. Orlando Cepeda. Yeah, but people thought I was a racist. Every Christmas, I go up to Orlando Cepeda. Go, hey, I fell asleep about it. <laughs> hey, Orlando, it's Don Zimmer. <laughs> fell asleep about it. I'm in Ohio. I'm at a winter game. I'm going down to South America. I got to play baseball. You know that, that or listen to the wife. <laughs> yeah, we got a Christmas Day game. The wife's going to uh, her mother's. I'm going to a Christmas Day game in Brazil. Hmm. So, fellas, about it. I understand that means Merry Christmas. How's Minnie Minoso doing? He got hit in the head again? Yeah? Tell Minnie and fellas about it. Wonder worm of love. That's when I come back. I'd come back and I'd go, okay, I'm taking Matthew Perry's comedy class this year. That's right. He's going to teach me how to go up at the end of a sentence. And it's in instant sarcasm. It's instant Emmy. Jennifer Aniston's character would come in and go, oh, did you eat all the bagels? <laughs> bagels as in bagels? <laughs> Five minute laugh from the retarded audience from Nebraska, <laughs> who's been dead for 35 years. That's a make room for daddy audience that they never, they never cut out. And then you say to yourself, what do the other cast do? What did the blonde do? Lisa Kudrow. She was the mastermind. She knew how to deliver those lines that were excellently written. Crisp, crisp lines. She could uh, deliver them like that. But the if gun to your head, and you've got to say this, and I believe everybody from that generation will. Anybody from that generation who was lucky enough to grow up and be taught sarcasm by Matthew Perry and the eye roll by David Schwimmer. The single best moment on Friends was always the Matthew Perry Matt speak. <laughs> yes, going up, going up with the inflection. And then we, we, he would do a Tonight Show or Letterman. He'd do it there. He'd go out to Letterman, what balls, and say, hey, Dave, good top 10 list. <laughs> hey, Dave, here's a suggestion. Top 11? <laughs> top 11? Letterman, even though he was brilliant, was caught in the trap of the Matthew Perry wonder. The entire audience dulled from good orange weed they got medically from <laughs> Hawaii. The synthetic weed that they would get, take an Ambien and eat somebody's face and then go to the Letterman show. Letterman would laugh. He'd have to laugh. It was just that funny. <laughs> Matthew Perry is writing a biography. I understand he's looking for titles. Here's one, buddy. As a comedy fan, Matthew Perry. It's just that funny. I d and how about this? Matthew Perry, I dare you not to laugh. <laughs> A must, a must stocking stuffer for any comic worth his nutsack. Any comic who's on YouTube now and thinks they're wonderful under the age of 23. Here's a must, must get. The audiobook for Matthew Perry's biography, Matthew Perry. I dare you not to laugh. Because he reads it. I'm going to repeat that, ladies and gentlemen. This is a big announcement. Matthew Perry reads it in Matt speak. <laughs> The wonderful moment. My favorite moment in the book. I tore through it. 
I tore through it eight times. I read it cover to cover, word for word, letter for letter. Wonderful, funny letter for funny letter in this day of mailing it in with books. A comic gets a book deal, and guess what? We find out dating tips from Aziz Anzare, who, by the way, has the funniest show in the history of television right now on Netflix. I'll get to that later. He knows about sarcasm, too, but he does it in a very Middle Eastern way. That's the twist. How about trying a top 11? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you're funny. How? Uh, uh, Joey, did you just say something witty? Jennifer, is that, is that your new haircut? Hey, Dave, guess what? The new lineup has a brand new, a brand new Boy Meets World? How I Met Your Mother? It's sweeping the nation. And guess what? Matthew Perry gets paid for every one of those shows. You speak Matt speak and you get paid? Matthew gets paid. Matthew gets paid. And he doesn't let this lawyer make the call. There's a standard tape the lawyer plays. <laughs> if, uh, if Aziz and Zari or somebody else, one of the others, of these millennials taking over the world right now, if the, if the hip writing staff for two broke girls <laughs> dares to speak Matt speak, they will get this audio cassette sent by his lawyer. Uh, and you're not going to pay me how? <laughs> and you're being sarcastic on TV. Why? <laughs> you're not going to pay the king. Why? A bridge should have to If you say something can be misconstrued as sarcastic, you pay Matthew Perry. You pay Matt Speak. You pay him. David Schwimmer. The original title of his book was going to be Matthew Perry, What Happened to David Schwimmer? <laughs> Personally, that's a question I'd like to know, too, as a big fan of Friends. What did happen to David Schwimmer? Kids got a great head of hair. <laughs> Nobody pouts like David Schwimmer. Nobody. A wonderful, pouty voice. And you're going to make fun of David Schwimmer. Guess what? Why not make fun of the fucking ass he got for 20 years? More ass than a goddamn toilet seat. Got, got more pussy than a green-eyed you-know-what. Moon cricket. Matthew Perry... I'm going to list my top, Dan, mm -hmm. stick with me. I'm going to list my top 10. This is Rick Steve's funniest people in the world <laughs> for the last 20 years. Because once you get into different generations, it could change. So I can only relate to the last 20 years. Funniest people ever. Top five. I'll write them down as I say it. I may not remember the names. I'll just know they're funny. <laughs> okay. Again, I don't know this kid's name, but I have to put him in the top five. And as a comedian, I know these people. I understand you don't know them as civilians. In 1997, I had a development deal with the Fox Network. I went into the first meeting at 20th Century Fox with the uh, very powerful woman who ran the company. Once again, I said woman who ran the company. In the corner was a 24-year-old, half-Asian, half-African-American man. He had just graduated from UCLA. He had, a, he had a big, big yellow legal pad and a big fresh pen he had gotten from his parents for Christmas. It was a Mont Blanc. Of course, as much as my first car. He sat there in corduroy pants and Timberland work boots, just right out of an NWA video. <laughs> this kid had street cred. I asked who he was. And the woman who ran the company said that's, well, I won't say his first name. We'll call him Shecky. <laughs> that Shecky, what does Shecky do? Shecky's the head of comedy development at 20th Century Fox. 25-year-old, half-Asian, half-American, African-American man who went to UCLA. Graduated. Somehow bought work boots, took the Mont Blanc pen that his mother, I don't know if the mother was African-American or Asian, <laughs> that was not specified, and became, within two years out of college, the head of comedy development at 20th Century Fox. Of course, as a comic, I was cynical. I was cynical. And then we got into talking about comedy. And within 20 minutes, he had made my top five funniest people of all time. That's right. And you say, Art, why? What did he do? Right in the middle of my pitch, he lit himself on fire. <laughs> you know, you almost told that like Paul Harvey, one yeah. of the rest of the story. Paul Harvey. That's the tease. <laughs> right in the middle of the pitch. The head of the comedy development department at 
20th Century Fox in 1997. Half Asian, half African American. <laughs> I don't know if his mother was Asian or his father was Asian. <laughs> Again, not specified. In the middle of my pitch, he's let him, he lit himself on fire. <laughs> how did he do that? Well, I'll tell you how. He took out Salon Selective Shampoo Level 6, which we all know has high acid reflux. You can't take it on a plane. It's easy to hide anything in there. It's very flammable. I thought he was going to moisturize his head. <laughs> he was sweating quite a bit at dry skin. I felt for him. But I said he's the head of comedy development. I'm sure in his head he's thinking of something funny about this situation. Much like Richard Pryor did. <laughs> Turning a tragedy like dry skin. <laughs> on a, on when El Nino was blowing in L.A. Terrible times. And he took out that salon selected <laughs> level six. He put it on his moisturized head. He put a little bit back in to his hair, and then he took out a Zippo lighter. <laughs> he went to light a hand-rolled Cuban cigar, which were very popular back then, and you still <laughs> could smoke inside in L.A. That law had not been passed. A very, very hip cigar was the hand-rolled, yeah. hand-rolled Cuban, what they, they would call it a Philly Blunt, maybe nowadays, <laughs> hand-rolled tobacco straight from Brazil. He would roll it, lick it like a joint, and start smoking mm -hmm. it in a very hip way, almost like a hemp cigarette. As he was lighting the cigarette, he lit himself on fire. <laughs> now, you might say, Art, why would a man do that on purpose? You're wrong. Here's the funny part. It was an accident. <laughs> That's why it was funny. He accidentally killed himself <laughs> with third-degree burns. And I laughed for four weeks. <laughs> were the Santa Ana winds blowing? Santa Ana winds were blowing. And his ashes blew right out into the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> now, you might say, Art, what about all the shows that needed comedy developing? <laughs> At the time, I believe there were shows just hanging out, in the, hanging out to dry. Dr. Phil was about to get a sitcom. Emeril Lagasse, the chef, was pitching his show. Apparently, he was very, very involved in that. I talked to Emeril later, and he said that kid who lit himself on fire had a lot of great comedy ideas. <laughs> he was, you know, the BAM thing? The BAM thing? They were afraid about getting licensing, so he changed it to WHAM. <laughs> the head of comedy development changed it to WHAM, and they were about to get all the artwork for WHAM. It was going to be the, it was going to be the artwork for the show. It was going to say wham on Emerald's forehead with a goofy look on his face. All the idea of this kid, all the idea of Shecky, when accidentally he lit himself on fire, lighting a very hip hemp cigarette in the offices of the head of 20th Century Fox while I was in the middle of a pitch. All right, well, here were the top shows of that year. Friends? Friends, well, no. This was CBS, remember? Okay. okay. Uh, Do your homework and wash it on the cottage. What was Third Rock from the Sun on? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, quite frankly, I don't know. Third Rock from the Sun is what that means, Earth, right? Yeah. That was, that was on. That was huge. That's Every, CTV. Everybody Loves Raymond was on. Was House of Buggin' on? Was House of Bug? Oh, I know what he wanted to do. Everyone Loves Raymond. He was going to change the title. Everybody is on the fence about Raymond. <laughs> he wanted to change it to something a little bit more ambiguous because Raymond had a lot of humility, like a lot of funny people that he was going to fix it, even though it was a major hit in the fourth season. <laughs> he wanted to change it to either that or the jury's still out on how we feel about <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> Chris Rock had already taken Everyone Hates Chris, so they had to do something in the middle. And Shecky, the half-Asian, half-African-American head of comedy development at the age of 25 before he lit himself on fire accidentally in the offices of 20th Century Fox <laughs> while I was in the middle of a pitch Said, here's your two options, guys. I'm going to throw them out there, and guess what? I want my bonus. <laughs> no one came up with anything nearly as good. <laughs> and supposedly, Ray Romano flipped for it. <laughs> as a matter of fact, he invited Shecky and his partner. He had a life partner, Shecky. <laughs> over to uh, Everyone Loves Raymond's house. And he was going to reveal the new title of Raymond's family and the two twins Raymond has. It was very involved in the comedy. Phil Rosenthal was all set with a legal pad. And he said, here's the two titles. I'm on the fence about Raymond. The jury's still out about how we feel about Raymond. Thank you. So you might see, in all fairness to me, I did not know about those two ideas when I laughed at him <laughs> accidentally lighting himself on fire. But the physicality of it, if you could have, it was like Jim Carrey lighting himself on fire. You know the scene in Ace Ventura when he comes out of the shitter and says, do not go in there to Courtney Cox. <laughs> Imagine that him on fire in that scene. Real fire. Richard Pryor fire. We miss you, Shecky. I know somewhere in the half American, <laughs> half African American, half Asian section of heaven, I'm sure they have their own section, wired off. 
He's making the third degree burn section of that section laugh with his ideas. You just have to find, you can tell someone's funny by hearing <laughs> one idea. On the fence about Raymond, right there you're sold. Right there it's a young Albert Brooks. But when he comes back with a topper, when he comes back with, in fact, the jury's still out on how we feel about Raymond, that's when you go, legend, which brings me to number four. <laughs> legend, what did I do there? What did I do? I did something very funny. Very funny. Kind of like, uh, don't go there. Matt speak. Matt speak. Don't go there. At number four. That's right. I have to put Matthew Perry. <laughs> Who's funnier than Matthew Perry? Well, apparently three other people. I'll tell you later. <laughs> but Matthew Perry, I, I've, I've mentioned it before. Come on. Come on. The funniest Perry for years was Steve Perry. <laughs> then it was Rick Perry. And it was Perry Cuomo. <laughs> now, and for always, in my opinion, it will be Matthew Perry. One word, Matt Speak. But Perry, Matt, Perry Mason didn't make the list. Perry Mason was a very <laughs> homosexual man in a wheelchair. I'm going to solve this case. Then I'm going to suck your dick, Your Honor. And I'm going to suck it hard. I want your brown. Mickey Rooney once said, he saw, he fucks, Mickey Rooney, true story, fucks 16 Japanese hookers <laughs> on a plane ride back from Japan. Or a boat. Was it a boat? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, six and one half done the other. Point is 16 Asian whores were on the plane. And uh, he was fucking their pussies the entire way. And then he saw an ass that he liked. And when you thought Mickey Rooney couldn't get more grotesque as a human being about sexuality, he looked at his assistant and said, I'd like to fuck her right in the brown. <laughs> Man referring to her asshole that gets brown like all of our assholes from a lot of shit passing through it you yeah, know for a, for a while i think it was around 2004 or 5 uh ups had a campaign what can brown do for you <laughs> <laughs> exactly I'm, I'm serious exactly what can brown do for you scrape your cock <laughs> could you imagine Four foot two Mickey Rooney fucking a four foot one Asian whore in the ass on a plane and saying, I'm giving it to you right in the brown. <laughs> now, in this top five list, is this Matthew Perry as a TV star or his movie career? Excellent point. No one brings that up. No one brings that up because no one can remember a movie, Matthew Perry. <laughs> How to give you a little dig there, Matt. You know I love you. I did a little match speak. I'll send you a check. What do I owe you? What do I owe you for making my podcast that much better? <laughs> Well, what about, I'll give you a couple of words that comedy will never be the same after hearing. Whole nine yards. Whole nine yards! 17 again. Oh, of course Dan knows it. <laughs> fools, two, fools rush in. Two people know Fools Rush In. It's a Matthew Perry movie. <laughs> two people, Rick Steves and Dan Valeno. <laughs> oh, no, and Tommy, who's the guy who would choreograph Broadway? Tommy Toon. Tommy Toon. <laughs> Tommy Toon knows it well. I want I, another contest for the listeners, okay? <laughs> if you can tell me the exact hour and second in the podcast that I stopped doing a Rick Steves impression, <laughs> got lazy and just started talking like me, <laughs> abandoning this bit, which was on life support for a while, if you can give me the exact... Mr. Dan Villato. That's right. The matrimonial peace <laughs> made his peace with Ken Cole. Steve Dahl. <laughs> And Rick Steves. The Kitty Disturby. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you've just heard is probably the weirdest broadcasting show in the history of radio. What you just heard proves that I stopped caring. Today I shot an HBO pilot <laughs> with arguably the biggest director producer in the history of comedy, Judd Apatow. I'm the second lead. I play myself. The name of the the name of the episode is Artie Lang. That's what I've done the last week. I'm the second lead of the fucking show. That's right. <laughs> How'd that happen? My life is a bizarre twist of a stupid carnival ride. It makes no sense. My life is a, someone you look at and you say, my God, they have an abnormally large cranium. They look disgusting. They look like they're from another planet. Then all of a sudden they dance like Fred Astaire for two seconds. Inconsistently. Then they go back into the darkness and trip. And their face falls into horseshit. 
They do heroin, they come out, they sing a song that's racist. They're banned from another broadcasting network. Then they turn up in their kitchen doing a podcast <laughs> with Dan Filato. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. What you just heard is probably the stupidest, craziest, nonsensical, chaotic shit you've ever heard in your life. Nothing I said in the last hour and a half. How long have I been talking? An hour and a half, An actually. hour and a half. One hour, 33 minutes, and 24 seconds. For the last one hour, 33 minutes, and 22 seconds, you've heard nothing. <laughs> I've just said 4,000 <laughs> words, and I've said nothing. I've done stupid voices that make no sense. I've done characters that make no sense, told jokes that have no structure. I've done horrible impressions. Dan Filato once again gave me nothing. He sat there quiet most of the time. <laughs> Couldn't even fake laugh. He looked down in disgust and embarrassment, leaving me out to dry. <laughs> you hear that dead silence? You think that's fun when you're doing a Richard Speck impression? <laughs> no. Dan refuses to give me anything. Gino Bisconti, nothing. I'm like a tweet that doesn't mention Gino Pascanti's name. He ignores it. Chris Cotton, nothing, ever, ever. Filato, nothing, ever. I'm here, I'm, hang, I'm hung out to dry. Everyone says, when are we going to do the package? You're going to do the package? You're going to do the package? You want to do the package? You're going to do the package? 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 I sit down, I talk, and I get nothing. They press on, and I talk like this. They don't even fake laugh, not a giggle. Throw me a bone, proving they've never done comedy. They've never done it, because they know. If they had, give me something. Slap the table. Make a noise. I'm hung out to dry doing a Bill Curtis impression. <laughs> Giving highlights of a dinner party in a backyard in Chicago where people name their penises. I'm bringing that up. Disco demolition references. I'm talking about Rick Steves, Rick in L.A., Mexican impressions. I'm telling horrible racist Rick jokes. Speck. Rick Speck. Rick, Rick and Speck. <laughs> yeah, Dan adds that. Made no sense. <laughs> First time he opens his mouth. Makes no sense. Digs a deeper hole for me. That's what he did. Today, I shot an HBO pilot. I finished the take. People applauded. They laughed. They said, Artie, great job. Great job. Maybe we'll make you a regular. You're going to be on this show. You're going to be a big star. HBO, blah, blah, blah. Then I come here, and it's the same shit. <laughs> Dan's like, we're going to do a podcast. we got to do a podcast. You guys want to do a podcast. Well, if I do the podcast, will you help me out at all? If I just keep talking for an hour and a half, will you do anything? Probably not. Okay. Thank you. Can you fake laugh at all? Because it's hard when there's just dead silence. Probably not. What will you be doing? Oh, nothing. No. The Brussels were fine. Who, what heterosexual was, guy knows? That was him? in your past life. <laughs> <laughs> that was when you were yeah. a different person. Because I'm, when you I'm were Bruce Jenner. Yeah, I'm a rump wrangler because I know the name uh, of my rump dog. wrangler. What are you a rump wrangler? No, not, no, not just because. Okay, that. the Rick Steves thing I give you. I didn't notice all the the uh, outwardly gay stuff. That, that, <laughs> Until you pointed out. Oh, Dan, I give come you on. that. I didn't. I watched the travel show. You notice show. gay stuff about everybody. That's your first thing to point out. He seems like a pig. Well, because he always had his wife on the show and his kids. Oh, that's the kid can buy that. <laughs> he's not gay. It's his wife. And he's, since you he's pointed sucking, it out. He's blowing a guy next to his wife. <laughs> he's not since, gay. That's his wife. Since you pointed out, I've noticed certain pointed things. Pointed out? <laughs> Did you ever hear Rick Steves? <laughs> no, not oh, until play, I started play, doing Steve, this. Uh, uh, I heard Rise on, okay. Rise on in this oh. loop then. Okay. Oh, I, I, uh, he, he, uh, this is the guy that Dan can't be in the same room with. Uh, he gets the shakes. Explain okay. it, Dan. Again, he, he gets the shakes and he can't be in the same room with him because he's so, he, he admires him so much <laughs> because he's able to haggle at a hotel. <laughs> uh, right? I mean, you <laughs> haven't told us anything else about him. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to go down this uh, rattle again, uh, listeners, but they love this. They seem to love these discussions, but the Brussels Griffon thing opened up a whole new wormhole. What straight guy says Brussels Griffon? That's the name of the dog! No, it's Brussels Griffon. It's not. It's Griffon. Well, Even just, when I showed it to Russ, he goes, you're right. It's Griffon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Russ Maneev gets it. Yeah, right. I, I, I bet he does. <laughs> okay. Believe me, we all get it. <laughs> You're the one who doesn't seem to get it. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm kidding. Of course I'm kidding. Okay, let's see. Uh, he's probably going to have some fun in France. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, next <laughs> time, this, okay, listen. This is the guy that Dan... How long have you been listening to this guy, Dan? How long have you been a fan of his? I think they started distributing the show around 88, all right, 89. Okay. So 25 years, 20, 30 years. Okay, this is the guy that Dan claims for 30 years didn't realize he was gay. I'm Rick Steves. Thanks for joining us. In this program, we're bringing you some dizzy alpine thrills. We're on the tip of a peak, high above the French resort town of Chamonix. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah! Ah! Luge and feast Put it up. a little fondue in Chamonix. Then we'll ride the Glacier Express to the region <laughs> of Hopfenzell, where we'll spend the night in a rustic mountain hut. Ah! In Western Europe, France and tiny Switzerland come together high in the Alps. Starting in the French Alpine Resort of Chamonix, we'll cross the width of Switzerland to Appenzell, <laughs> seeing spectacular sights along the way. <laughs> but first, let's backtrack a bit. A scenic slalom of alpine wonders fills the valley right here in the shadow of Mount Blanc. It fills the valley? And down there is where we woke up, in the town of Chamonix, <laughs> a world-class climbing center. The town of Rushmore. We began very early to minimize the crowds and clouds. Both tend to gather in the afternoon. These two climbers are pointing to Mount Blanc. <laughs> Monsieur <laughs> Beaumont <laughs> and Monsieur Pacard okay. were the first to climb. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Pacard! He just said Brussels Griffon. That's what he said. <laughs> All right, Dan, you're laughing. So is it a joke or are you gay or not a joke? You played a practical joke on me. So he he didn't realize he was gay. Who? You, you didn't realize Rick Steves was gay. You know, I, I, I really didn't notice it until <laughs> you started there's, pointing there's out. A lot of I pieces. started pointing it out. Nobody else did because all my because friends are probably are guidebooks. Oh, Dan, they're Every person. Dan, they're you, afraid to point it out. Okay, you met my friend Dominic from, from Folio <laughs> Wines. I did? He came here for a day. He uh, watched the I believe if I had a loan with Dominic, I'd say, what do you think about this? <laughs> yeah. Dominic used his books in Italy. He's uh, in yeah, Dominic's saying, the Folio uh, Wine Company. Yeah, but could Dominic be in the same room with him? I'm sure that he could. <laughs> tell him what happened. Tell, tell uh, have Ryan. Met him? Has yeah. he met him? Oh, oh God! Him. You know what? You haven't heard the Rick Steves thing. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you I knew he liked I them. thought I could get through the end of the year without another Rick. Dan, Steve. let me tell you something. You could have if you didn't pronounce it correctly. That's the name of the dog. Okay. Explain to Dave why Rick Steves is famous. <laughs> He, he writes these amazing travel books. And he's on PBS all the time. I Dave, can't Dave, wait, don't laugh. Is. You have no idea. Save the laughter. You have no idea. Go ahead, keep going. And he just has these amazing books. And uh, the guy from uh, Page Six, I can't think of his Richard, name, now, that we had on. Richard Johnson? Johnson? No, no, no. That Richard we have, Johnson. came in here. <laughs> the, the the reporter that you Richard Johnson no no that you like Richard Johnson he, he said he, I don't fucking know what you're talking about from from California he came in here and we uh, who cares okay. tell the he stuff. even he mocked me so bad on on Twitter and stuff and then he about a month later he, after watching his shows he goes you know what Dad 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 he's he, that, that no. forget it. that's you're, you're being irrelevant who's, tell the, the who's the guy I have no idea tell us he doesn't exist tell the story. <laughs> Tell him the rest of the story. Uh, so uh, I just he has he, he has a travel show. He has a travel show on on it's on PBS. And, and why why is he so special to you? Because he has this uh, special gene in him that I I don't have. Like when I travel and I love to travel, I go to Europe. He can like go up and ask for deals and stuff and get and I just don't have that. And I I I'd just rather pay full price. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to make fun of him. He's gonna get angry. I'm not gonna get angry at you. No. Okay. Now. Okay. Now. Okay. That's the setup. That's totally true. Oh, that's just Benza, the AJ Benza. That's okay. Right. Now, Dan. AJ Benza does not believe he's goofing. If oh, he's not. I have the same. Okay. Wait. Dave. Dave. Like, stop. What? That's Dave. That's the opening act. All right. Okay. All you heard was the. You just heard the clash. Okay. The Who is about to take the stage. <laughs> I play play Rick Steves for oh. for. Play, go. All right. I gotta hold on. I gotta get something. Find him on the internet. It's the way he words it. Though. Okay. What well, you just heard. <laughs> <laughs> you just heard the Washington Generals warming up. <laughs> You're about to hear the globe drive. <laughs> okay. This is the guy Dan gets the sweats in front of and can't be in the same room. <laughs> this is a clip from his travel show that Dan's about to play. Dave, believe me. So do you want to do calisthenics? Because you might. You're going to laugh so hard you might pull him up. <laughs> This might explain what happens at the high school. The <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't mean the second rules. <laughs> Just, uh, this is Hi, I'm Rick Steves, back with more of the best of Europe. <laughs> this time, we're enjoying the edible, drinkable, scenic, and floatable delight of one of my favorite corners of France, Burgundy. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I'm, oh, come on. I'm almost envious that Dave is hearing this for the first time. 
Turn it up, Dan. It's the, it's the Just food. turn it the fuck up like Born to Run. My favorite color, burgundy. <laughs> Wait, Dave, you have no idea. <laughs> I love how hard Dave's laughing. I'm picturing what's happening during the theme here. Oh. Burgundy is calm, cultivated, <laughs> serene, where nature is as sophisticated as the people. The traditions are strong here. If you're looking for the quintessential French culture, you'll find it in Burgundy. In this show, we'll appreciate Uh-oh. superb Burgundy wine. Is <laughs> it a medieval is he? hospice? Build a barrel. Slur best cargo. Ponder medieval monasticism. He's the one ignoring his wife. <laughs> then drop in on a modern monastic community and explore yeah, the Burgundian Stop it, you're distracting him. Listen to the voice. The voice later. France is the biggest country in Western Europe. Like. We'll head southeast of Paris to explore the region of Burgundy, <laughs> using the town of Beaune as a home base to explore its canals, vineyards, and... It's canals! Burgundy, like France, is late. It's fucking canals. In early industrial age. You don't know who he is? No. no. Nobody he does, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. No heterosexual man does. <laughs> 25 million <laughs> actually ship uh, dollars with a travel Yeah, yeah. The they're all chicks. To the Atlantic. Then watch Today, Alan. Trains and trucks. You know what I like Alley. about Burke? <laughs> yeah, I, start, I mean, okay, stop it. This is, I mean, again. Now, look, Artie. So I'm just about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave, now, what is your analogy there? <laughs> I... I I don't know. I don't want to say that. <laughs> okay. Are you afraid of his anger? Yes. Well, one day, yes. one day we were busting Dan so hard about this, like guys do. If at the end, believe me, so you're really a fan. Funny. You're a fan of the Chicago Cubs. If you went to the Chicago Cubs and told them a story, all, all your favorite guys, Ron Santos, your favorite guys of all time, Ernie Banks, they'd call you a fag because you're they, you're not a gay. You're not a gay guy. No. So we're having fun doing. It. I don't think he's gay at all. Of course not. I'm just saying I had the same. Thing happened to me where I couldn't talk, I couldn't sweat, but it was Lee Major. Was <laughs> acceptable. That like, makes <laughs> way more sense. And he's kidding. <laughs> but uh, that is. A if he gag. walked in here right now, what, what would you do? <laughs> well, just to show you guys up, I'd probably talk to him, but I'd be nervous. <laughs> hey, Danny. <laughs> I'd be nervous. <laughs> kind of like a nun in a cute I mean, he got like he met, he met Rick Steve once and he got the sweats and he couldn't stay in the room. He had to leave. <laughs> because you like your show that much? Because, yes, because I like his show that much. You think he's a classy job? Tell, no, tell, tell his, Anthony. His books are good. Okay, Anthony, <laughs> you don't even know that. You don't even know the half of it. I, I didn't know it was like okay, that. Okay, so <laughs> t- describe to Anthony what happened when you met him. Now, you know who Rick Steves is, right? I do. You know what he sounds like? D- yeah. Thanks. Do you know what he sounds like? Kind of like a higher okay. voice. Okay, <laughs> right? play Rick Steves for just give me at least, yeah, I forget. I mean, I've seen him on like if, PBS, if, if, on PBS if you, right? If you podcast people think you've heard, say, oh, fuck, we've heard this before. Dude, you can't hear this enough. <laughs> you cannot hear this enough. Trust me, I'm the professional comedian. This will always be funny. <laughs> okay? You can, re- you can hear this on a loop. Did you go to meet him like at a you know at a well, signing? Or you, something? You'll, you'll hear. You'll hear. Okay. Just, just believe me. Trust me. Okay, I do. <laughs> Okay, Hi, I'm Rick Steves, back with more of the best of Europe. <laughs> the people here claim if you stand on a chair, you can see all across their country. <laughs> this is the best of the Netherlands. Ah, Thanks oh. for joining us. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Ah! <laughs> people here claim if you stand on a chair, you can blow a giant. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. People claim if you stand on a chair, you can blow Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> okay, play more. No, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. good. The best of the Netherlands. Guess where he says Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> that's his theme music. So Dan has just put the Vaseline on his hand now. <laughs> Traveling here, it's easy to see how the Netherlands is a lot like its people. Efficient, a good balance of old and new, <laughs> hard work and fun, innovation <laughs> and tradition. <laughs> even with a dense population and an ongoing battle with the sea. <laughs> Are warm and even sealed. An ongoing battle well, with your voice in your head. <laughs> Go for an old fashioned sail. <laughs> oh my God. And visit the ultimate flower market. <laughs> we'll marvel at Dutch masters. <laughs> Smoke some eels. <laughs> pull out all the stops on an unforgettable organ. <laughs> oh, yeah, we will. Start up a classic windmill. An unforgettable in the organ. Rest of Europe, is the Netherlands, with 12 provinces, including North and South Holland. Ah! Everything we'll see is within an hour of Amsterdam. We'll Wait, sail what was the sight under- sea. Go back to the unforgettable organ. An ongoing battle with the sea. The Dutch are warm. Ah, ah, ah. Power mark. <laughs> we'll marvel at Dutch masters. 
smoke some eels, <laughs> pull out all the stops on an unforgettable organ, <laughs> and start up a classic <laughs> win. In the west of Europe, if is you the wrote this, people would say no. It can't be possible. Ow. Pull out all the stops uh, on an unforgettable organ. <laughs> I mean, I guess I've never heard his voice in isolation like that. You know, you know, <laughs> you know there's always like, I've seen the show and he's walking around. He, he and, sounds like Richard wow. Simmons' gayer brother. Do you feel Dan is homosexual? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. What What makes you say that so quickly? I don't know. He, did, he didn't suck a cock in front of me. I'm not well, really sure. Yeah. Well, basically, I got a couple of stories you can tell. It's almost that that would be less gay. <laughs> Let me hear the stories. You know, who Rick Steves is. No. <laughs> We can't get into it. It's you know it's so good. I can't get into the story because it's so good. I will go down that tangent and spend hours, and I, I won't get out of it. It's that it's it's such oh, odd. Man, just I'll look him up. Just it's such it. odd human behavior. Okay, there's oh. a guy named Rick Steves. Okay, who Dan is such a fan of. Okay, I mean such a fan of <laughs> that he can't. This geek guy. Okay. He can't be in the same room as him. He was in the same room as him one time, and he got the sweats. He got the sweats, and he shook. That's him. And he couldn't be right there and corroborate this. <laughs> right? Yes. You got the sweats. He, and he's a television personality <laughs> focusing on European travel? Right. <laughs> That's a guy that you got now, wait a, a heart on for? Now, wait a minute. Okay. You know, Again, I say this to everybody who I tell a story to. <laughs> what you're experiencing right now Dan, look him up. Just look him up, please. You know I did look You him know up. what's coming. No, we've got to get uh, a full audio. I might as well. What you're experiencing right now, Adrian, is the opening act. Okay. Okay? This is the clash. David Johansson, the who is about to take stage. This guy that Dan one time was in the same room as, and his wife made sure it happened because she knew how much Dan loved this guy. When he went up to him, it's describe what happened, Dan. I couldn't. I couldn't speak. He was because speechless. of his European traveling. <laughs> he couldn't speak because I had been such a fan for such a long time. Right. I just couldn't speak. He was a fan of a guy on PBS who's a <laughs> travel guy. I'd been watching his show since I, I think he started going on PBS around eighty nine or ninety, and I just became a fan. And his books are amazing. Oh, his books are amazing. <laughs> And what ability does he have, Dan? What gene does he have, as you say, that you don't have that makes you impressed by him? He knows how to get deals, like on hotel rooms and on... Tra on <laughs> I can't... Every time this comes up, I can't not talk about it. Did he ever tell you how to get hotel rooms? Wait, okay, wait, wait, one second. One oh, second, sorry. One second. All right. Why don't you tell Now, what happened... What, no. Dan, 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 what happened... Okay, we know that. I didn't do this. What we happened then when you went up? Describe to Agent what happened when you went up to him. Your wife brings him up, and this is my husband's a big fan. <laughs> I, I couldn't talk. And what happened? I started to. Did you cry? I started to sweat, sweat, and I had to leave. Sweat. He had to leave. How do you know this story? You because I, I dug it him. out of him. But this is the fi this is the fiftieth time we've talked about it. I life. told you. I've known him for five years. We talked about it. I, I said I I couldn't believe it when, when I first heard it. Okay. I was that way. But for a long stage, time, yeah. for a long time, I just knew it was a guy who had the sweats about. <laughs> <laughs> then I heard the guy. Okay, Adrian, what you're you have it, Dan? I am. What you're about to hear is the show of this guy and his voice. Go ahead. Traveling here, it's easy to see how the Netherlands is a lot like its people. Efficient, a good balance of old and new, hard work and fun, innovation and tradition. Even with a dense population and an ongoing battle with the sea, the Dutch are warm and even... We'll cruise through a mighty port, go for an old-fashioned sail, and visit the ultimate flower market. We'll marvel at Dutch masters, smoke some eels, Pull out all the stops on an unforgettable organ. I thought you say orgasm. And unforgettable up a organ. Windmill. In the west of Europe is the Netherlands, with 12 provinces, including North and South Holland. Ah. Everything we'll see is within an hour of Amsterdam. You fucking we'll sail what was the Zyder Sea, blocked off by long dams. Explore characteristic towns from Delft to Rotterdam ah. and Harlem to ah. with lots in between. Lots in between. 
<laughs> Ralph to the Rotterdam. I'd stop it. Oh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And Dan doesn't think that guy's gay, by the way. <laughs> oh, God. He's definitely gay. So, now, now Adrian, I'll re-ask you the question. Yes. Do you think Dan is gay? <laughs> he, has, he gets the sweats around that guy and can't be in the same room. <laughs> What other explanation could there possibly fucking be? Maybe he molested him as a child. Okay, we're, that's what I say to Dan. We're, did something was, happen no, to you? No, nothing happened. Did an effeminate guy fuck you? <laughs> what, the, guy, <laughs> the guy you're about to hear also has a wife and children. Okay. okay. Now remember, so did Liberace. Well, he just got divorced. Of course he did. Go ahead, Dan. Liberace now, this is the guy. This is the guy who Dan can't be the same. Traveling here, it's easy to see how the Netherlands is a lot like its people. Efficient, a good balance of old and new, hard work and fun, innovation and tradition. Even with a dense population and an ongoing battle with the sea, the Dutch are warm and even keeled. We'll cruise through a mighty port, go for an old-fashioned sail, and visit the ultimate flower market. We'll marvel at Dutch masters, smoke some eels, Smoke Pull out all the stops on an unforgettable organ. <laughs> and start up a classic windmill. <laughs> In the west of Europe is the Netherlands. An unforgettable organ. Including North and South Holland. <laughs> okay, that is, Everything we'll see is within I, an hour You have to stop because the whole we'll show what was the, the, the whole show, again, you guys, I'm, I apologize for bringing this. I thought you knew. I've done this three or four times. We have to stop because I'll do four hours on this. It's the single most fascinating fact I've ever known about a human being, that he can't be in the same room as, as this guy. And his wife, Dan's wife, as a gift, said, I'm going to let you meet Rick Steves. And Dan went up to him and couldn't speak and ran out of the room. Wow. Oh. <laughs> right? Wow. Now, is there any, what do you guys, I'm going to ask, be honest, is there anything you would conclude from that? Is there any deduction you'd make about Dan based on that information alone? I would say that Dan has a fascination with uh, incredible organs. Okay. <laughs> That's a good way. That's a very polite way of putting it. Here. Okay. <laughs> his guest is his kid? Yeah. Now, from your reaction, his kid sounds like it, a cum gobbler. A... <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so it Dan's was... got that little, like, you know, that face. Like, mm. it, was a, it was a two-parter this week. It was Christmas markets around the world. Mm, we're going to split it down the middle. <laughs> and then my son Andy Steve's on... Even, okay. E even more budget traveling. At Christmas markets around the world. We're going to skip that one. <laughs> We're going to go right to Andy Steve's. Because I'm curious to see if, in fact, the apple doesn't fall far from the ass. Oh, God. If the apple doesn't fall that far out of the ass. And here's Andy Steve's uh. and his father, Rick Steve's. There's a new generation of American travelers finding their favorite places to explore around the world. Like my son, Andy. He's figured out how budget-conscious college students can have fun city-hopping across Europe. One thing that's really big across Europe right now, and it's really shaken up the, the tourism scene, are free tip-based walking tours. Hi, I'm Rick Steves. <laughs> wait Andy a minute, Steves, wait a minute. So was, that, <laughs> <laughs> was that his kid? Yeah. Well, so his kid's a top. <laughs> He's got that deep voice. One thing that's right. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> th th thank you, Dad. You're welcome, son. May I just say, this is a proud moment. I know now what Ken Griffey Sr. must have thought when he watched his son Ken Griffey Jr. hit one out of the ballpark. Hit one right into the end zone. When, hit, when Ken Griffey, uh, 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 when Kettled, when Karen, when, Ke when Kevin Griffey, <laughs> When Kevin Griffey Sr. <laughs> saw Kevin Griffey Jr. Uh, do I have that right? When Kevin Grunny... When, when KG... When Sr. saw Jr. When Kevin Griffey Jr. saw his son. <laughs> Kevin Griffey Sr. Son. When they hit back-to-back -back home runs in the, in the major leagues. When they both swung and hit the ball right into the touchdown enclosure. <laughs> Right, right into some of my favorite directions. And of course, where else? San Francisco <laughs> or Seattle. <laughs> and they hit back. To, now I know what that feels like because I am, I am introducing my son. On uh, and what is he talking about? He's going to tell about what is it? He's talking about hiking right up an ass, oh God. right up a canyon in Europe. And the, and I'll tell you what, this kid is a chip off the old cock. <laughs> I mean, block. 
I'm sorry. I make that a lot. I make that mistake quite a bit. <laughs> Rick, when you go to a, when when Rick, when a trendy German takes you to a beer garden by yourself when because the wife is a little tired, <laughs> and your uh, boys home lathering up the boys. What are the tra- the trendy Germans? Rick, what do they take when they take you to a beer garden? What do they tap? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked me that question, because it's both metaphorically, figuratively, and literally. They tap first of all into a fine keg of beer, and in that keg of beer lies hopes, dreams, and my feces. <laughs> And then they tap into something that's actually beer. But then they tap into something most important. They tap into my emotional being. They tap into that that thing in me, that personality in me that comes out and says, Hello, friend, y'all. Hi, I'm Rick Steves, back with more of the best of Europe. This time, we're in Italy for the wildest horse race in the world. Ha! <laughs> it's Siena, the Palio, and a whole lot more. Thanks for joining What did you like about horses? The theme music's great. <laughs> that was Ichi Pasta. This is him. Tuscany seems to be every Italy connoisseur's favorite region, and for good reason. Here in the heart of Italy, the rustic soul and historic charm collaborate, seducing travelers into tossing their itineraries. <laughs> ah! Ah! Seducing we'll enjoy an aperitivo on a great ah! ah! exquisite art. I can't shut that. That's the writer has to be a joke, <laughs> a joke on him. The writer has to be goofing on him to toss their itinerary. <clears throat> That's... He, he writes his own stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'd like to write toss salad. I'm Rick Steve. <laughs> I'm Rick Steve. I got my tongue pierced <laughs> and I want to go in the gay porno. I'd like a nice toss salad. <laughs> PC, please. So play a little more from that. I can't get enough of it. Eat cheese in an Etruscan cellar. Settle into a farmhouse B&B. <laughs> learn to make peachy pasta. Taste one of the world's finest wines. Prepare for a festival. And go to the races. Italy packs 55 million people into an area about the size of Arizona. Between Florence and Rome so is the region of words. Tuscany. Oh, it's packed in Siena. Okay, picture, here's the analogy. Yeah. Picture my assholes, Arizona. <laughs> that writing's got to be. And picture packing in. <laughs> as much as picture, you can. Okay, my, my assholes, Arizona. Picture packing Texas in. <laughs> All of Texas gets packed into my Arizona. <laughs> okay, my assholes, Arizona. Here's how I'll describe the analogy like this. My assholes, Arizona. <laughs> and picture someone's penis is I don't know the uh, the Lu- Louisiana Purchase, <laughs> the entire southern shelf of America <laughs> gets packed in, packed into my wonderful asshole. Wait, what does he look like? This guy? He looks just like uh, James Caan. <laughs> <laughs> that writing on that is unbelievable. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, listen, the writer Rocco. Listen, <laughs> there's a lot of packed in here. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of giggling after I say pack. <laughs>